check one a one Check one. Hey.
Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for coming. This is our second and last day of the MAG portion of our meetings. Um, just a reminder, meeting is being recorded. Summary report will be out next week. When you take the floor, please, if you want to take the floor, please put up your flag and wave it a little bit because sometimes we can't see it. And also, if you're online, you can just raise your hand. And when the chair calls you, please um, give a short introduction of yourself, your name and stakeholder group, and try and speak slowly because we say our names very often and sometimes we say it very, very fast and we can't hear. Um, with that, I'll hand it over to our chair, Carol Roach, to stop the meeting. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody had a, a good rest. <clears throat> Sorry. And thank you for joining us on this last day of the face-to-face -face MAG meeting. We have adjusted your agenda for this morning to finalize discussions on the IGF 2024 theme, sub-theme, as well as the program structure in the first half of the morning session. I would kindly ask you to be crisp and constructive as our goal should be to find consensus on these pending issues. Besides this theme and the sub-theme of the IGF, I would like to agree on the types and number of sessions. So far, we decided to discontinue with the town halls and place a limited number of launches and award sessions under the purview of the MAG. These launches and awards would be shorter in time. <coughs> Excuse me. And the Secretariat will ensure to schedule them at the very beginning of every end of day. We also, or, or very end of day, sorry. We also decided to continue with the category of open forums as it has been a successful instrument to attract more governments and treaty-based international organizations to the IGF. We have heard from the DCs and from the NRIs who are being very collaborative on finding a way to, effect it, to efficiently integrate in the program, keeping their bottom-up character and local specifications uh, specialties. We should also endorse the IGF program tracks, which include the newcomers, high-level, youth, parliamentary, judiciary, and business track. After the morning coffee break, we will hear from the working group on workshop processes, who will present the workshop proposal form and the workshop manual that they have been working on. The MAG should then endorse the session um, submission process as we will launch the call for sessions on the 15th of March. The afternoon session will be dedicated, uh, will be dedicated to the selection of the policy network and best practice forum proposals, an agenda item that we postponed to the face-to-face -face meeting. We will hear updates from the intersessional work, including NRIs and IGF capacity development initiatives. And before we end the day with our discussion on strategic vision for future IGFs, we will hear updates from the remaining MAG working groups. With this in mind, let's get started.
Okay, so the first thing we'll do is to um, hand over to the host country with regards to the overarching theme. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you uh, to all my colleagues, uh, MAG members. Um, I had a discussion with our uh, technical community, and I must say that first, uh, they are in very supportive position for MAG, and they wish uh, to provide the maximum support for the MAG. Uh, in fact, uh, they told me that the purpose of the previous proposal was for simplification, and they thought this is a sort of a support to MAG to give them more insight about what we are thinking. Uh, having said that, uh, all the options that presented by the MAG is accepted by our local uh, technical community. In particular, they put some three proposals or three uh, overarching team suggestion for the MAG, uh, building uh, our digital future. Uh, sorry, Celine, can you just put it up on there? Just type it out to me. Yes. So uh, building our digital future uh, with all stakeholders, building with our digital future with all multi-stakeholders, and building our digital future with all. And any other suggestion that coming from the MAG will be supported by our local technical community. So thank you. Thank you very much.
and options for the cup. While we're doing that, any comments, adjustments? Please. Morning, everyone. Um, this is Elisa Hiva for the record. Um, I would like to thank the um, the 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 host country for um, uh, the three proposals. Um, I'm very uh, uh, pleased to see that that there's an option with multi-stakeholder in it. Um, I think it it needs either an S at the end, so with multi-stakeholders, or uh, maybe even better would be um, to say building our um, digital future multi-stakeholder or building our multi-stakeholder digital future. It, it's a little bit off at the moment, but... Um, um, when I say building our... Um... Digital multi-stakeholder future. Uh, no? Yeah, no, that's off too. Multi-stakeholder digital future. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But for the rest, I'm I'm very positive about the the proposal. So thank you very much. Uh... Uh... Um, thanks, Chenga Tai, but I, I have a feeling maybe that Chris and Bruno's hands in the Zoom might have been up first, but maybe maybe you can't see the Zoom. Yeah, I so, don't have internet. No. There's no internet on the top <laughs> table. Oh, my God, the world will end. Uh, yeah, I think in the participants list um, it was Bruna and then Chris, so I'm happy to follow both of them. Okay, uh, Bruna, Chris, then Jordan. Thanks, Chenga Tai and Carol and Abdurrahman. First of all, thanks a lot for the discussions and for mm -hmm. your technical community to be allowing to not allowing but be willing to include the multi-stakeholder term in the overarching theme i think it's super meaningful and very relevant for us this year i would just like to support the idea of at for of doing building our multi-stakeholder digital future the fourth option because i agree with elisa that um with multi-stakeholder or multi-stakeholders doesn't make a lot of sense so I see that option four would be the best one we got so far. And once again, thanks a lot for, for the compromise. Uh, thank you. Uh, Chris? Good morning, everyone. Um, I am essentially repeating what <clears throat> others and Bruno have said. Um, I really thank you for all the, the work and discussion that has gone into this. I, I think it's, it's really approaching something that um, is very in line with what we were discussing yesterday and um, hopefully in line with uh, the hosts and, and something that can be uh, inclusive and, and also attractive to um, a really broad diversity of stakeholders. So, yeah, I think number four out of those is the um, most elegant construction and, and, and seems to capture uh, that discussion. So thank you very much again. Jordan? <coughs> I can save time by just saying me too. <laughs> okay. 
the floor is open. So. Thank you, the host country. I think they have made a lot of efforts. And all the original three are acceptable for us. I think it's really good. And we are from different culture. I think it's really inclusive. Thank you. Do you have a preference? Uh, one, two, three, all three are acceptable. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Can I have somebody else from another stakeholder group to give a comment? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, and uh, um, um, I would say that uh, we must be grateful to the host for their effort in uh, crystallizing this or narrowing down these themes to these three or four themes. Um, uh, from a standpoint of uh, the government stakeholders, I would suggest we keep uh, uh, our digital future with all stakeholders. It will be more uh, acceptable and attractive. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's up to the host. How do they see it? Uh, from from the standpoint of the government stakeholders, of the wider community of government stakeholders, I would uh, support uh, the, uh, the, thematic, uh, the, the topic, which is our digital future, building our digital future with all stakeholders. Thank you. <laughs> Karina Mirarda, MAC member. Um, I want to I want to the host country thank you for providing the options. Um, I share the same perspective as Chris and Jordan. And for me, the option number one is good for me. Thank you. Okay, again, <laughs> Karina Mirarda, MAC member. Um, thank you to the host country for the options. And um, I think same as the same perspective as Chris and Jordan, the option number one is good for me. Thank you. Any other comment? I'll give it a six count. Oh, I will then hand it over to the chair. <laughs>
Okay, I want to thank the host country for these options. And um, I think we've all come to a majority type uh, agreement that number one will be the overarching theme, building our multi-stakeholder digital future. You can clap. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. So yesterday at Ask Persons to think of their individual communities and think to, when they think about the sub themes to see whether or not the wording for the sub themes would resonate with them. Is that something that they can go back to their community and say, hey, this these are the sub themes um, and this is the message that the IGF is going to bring out this year. So with having said that, um, you were also given a document to go through um, yesterday to, to add your um, comments. Um, Celine, you want to put the Um, we have we had a few comments on on the um, on each suggestion. Now we can mix and match the suggestions if we find that there are things in number one we want as opposed to two or three or whatever. Um, as I had indicated, number one is from the internet we want um, paper. And this is also something that the MAG and the LP will be working to further expand. So the, the idea here is that we have a message um, that LP and MAG working on. So we can choose this one or we can just go ahead and choose something else. Um, as Carol, myself, I think that um, number one, uh, is a good layout. It's something that was thought about um, by the LP, um, hashed over, and they came up with these ideas. And it will show that IGF, um, sorry, MAG and LP are united. Having said that, there also the um, second one where we kind of should have looked at what Marcus had said regarding what we did in in the past and having these high level um, ideas. And we have here building our digital future, safeguarding our digital future, empowering our digital future. And um, what I like about this one is that it goes back to the to the overarching um, to the overarching theme with regards to digital future. <clears throat> uh, the third suggestion um, carries a little bit more meat on for each um, title where um, it's longer, but you could read more into it. And it's harnessing innovation and balancing risks in digital space. Uh, the digital contribution to peace and sustainable sustainability empowering digital inclusion in the world, improving multi-stakeholder um, and digital governance, optional human rights in the digital universe. Okay, so having said that, um, the floor is open. No? Okay. Jordan? There we go. 
Uh, thanks, Carol. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I think one of the key challenges we face this year um, is a lot of attention from governments and other stakeholders on the broad challenges of digital governance. Um, that's one of the things that's inspired the um, the uh, policy brief and the GDC process. And from my point of view, it means that we need to lift our eyes in this year's IGF, as we usually do, um, beyond the concerns that most strictly relate to the internet as a system and an infrastructure. Um, and to me, among these three proposals, the problem with adopting the leadership panel paper uh, set of sub-themes is that they really are focused uh, on the internet as a system um, and the things that it offers. Not entirely, it's not just about the tech, but it's more oriented in that direction. Um, so I think from my point of view, uh, it would be preferable to take either of the other two options because they both uh, give hooks to that broader debate that is obviously not being seen as being had in the IGF by the people who will make the decisions about the future of the IGF. And I think we all know, given the workshop detail that we get into, that these things are discussed, whatever the sub-themes are. Um, but I think it would be good to send um, the signal about getting to grips with the key challenges the world is facing. The, the option two is very high level and doesn't provide a lot of guidance. The option three digs into a bit more. Um, none of them are perfect, but that's just my um, instinct. So, and, you know, obvious self-interest of having started writing down the bits of the third suggestion. So I don't want to pretend to anyone that I didn't don't have a support for that as well. Thanks. Bruna. Thanks, Carol. And um, good morning again, everyone. Hopefully now you can hear me better. Also sharing some support for the third suggestion. I do think that um, it's the one that best encompasses a lot of the discussions we had um, yesterday and and also allows us to be to some extent um, high level, but also specific. So it's a good hybrid um, balance in that note. I would maybe perhaps um, make a suggestion that if we want to go with four instead of five, then we can bundle up three and four and then do empowering rights and digital inclusion in the world um, kind of thing. Um, I do believe that um, inclusion and human rights, they can walk together. It's better. It could be better aligned in terms of the 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 panel selection and sorting out stuff. So just a suggestion that perhaps we can bundle them up and then end up with four instead of five. And my last point would be um, on the improving multi-stakeholder governance. Um, perhaps we can do, um, some, yeah, just, I'll just keep the multi, the digital governance parts or because I think it makes more references to, to a lot of the other processes and as though this will be the space where also like a lot of the multi-stakeholder debates and so on, it also allows us to have a more high level, less specific, let's say, um, track for a lot of the multilateral discussions and this said duplication or overlapping between multilateralism and multi-stakeholderism to come into number four. So that this would be my two suggestions. And just my last point about the, the Internet Me One paper, I, I'm not on necessarily on the same page as, as Jordan, but I would just like to add that it's still a work in progress, right? Um, it's a work that will receive a lot of um, community input. Hopefully the deadline is today or tomorrow, right, for community inputs. And, and we might still see a change in that list. So I, I think it would be somehow confusing for us to adopt this list now as a kind of list set of sub teams, and then it changes later in the year. So Perhaps we can stay with number three. That's all. Thanks, Carol. Bruno, helpful input there. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Lito. Thank you, Lito Ibarra, my member. Um, I will. I will go with either uh, suggestion three or one. Uh, three has been explained by other fellow members. Uh, and I, I agree with them. On number one, which the, it, it will be the one I, I would prefer personally, as uh, uh, somebody said, it goes related more to internet, even though it uh, encompasses many other topics. 
But the main thing for me is two, two issues. They describe kind of the core values of the internet, not the technical core values, but the but the the other side, the, the, the human, the social core values of the internet, which are part, an essential part of a, a multi-stakeholder model. And, and also, uh, very important for me, we will be aligning with the leadership panel, which is, um, I think, uh, a very important and a strategic issue uh, in, in this uh, moment, historical moment, because we need to show a, a common front. And, and the leadership panel, they are there because they, they have a more I don't know, relevance, political relevance, uh, relevance, uh, social relevance. And and I think if we show somehow that we are working together, it would be a, a better message for, for the community. So that is why I will support number one, suggested number one, even though, as I said, if we go with three, I'm okay too. Thank you. <laughs> Just going from off of what Lito says, I think that's this also gives us um, if we choose one, it gives us the opportunity to hear from the experts to hear the discussions. So when we build or when the LP and the MAG build on the Internet, we want we would have heard from the different communities and we would be able to put some some input into it. Um, we may also gain some persons that may be interested in helping us um, to complete or to to put more meat to the internet we want. So yes, I agree with Bruno. She has a point um, in terms of there might be a shift. I, I don't think there'll be much of a shift because they've already established this and they've published this as a as a, a first draft. So if it's going to change, it's going to be very slight, if at all. Um, so I'm with Lido with regards to, to number one. It gives us the opportunity to um, get additional um, input and hear from the community. All right, Alhaji. Yes, um, th thank you very much. Um, I would also rather go with uh, number one, because when you look at the uh, the definition like whole and open, the whole actually is universal. So if you look at number two, it's talking about universal and inclusivity. It's actually, it's going to be covered under number one, which is the whole and open. And again, when you look at this part of the wall also, there are issues dealing with connecting everybody, you know, the, the bridging the digital gap. And I think that one should be covered under number one. So I think for me, um, the whole and open number one. I think I think is 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 a good suggestion. Thank you. Alyssa. Sorry. Good morning. This is Elise for the record. Um. So, with regard to the three suggestions, um, um, the first suggestion, when you mention, I, I felt that, um, I first wanted to make a comment about what you what you said, um, Ms. Chair, um, about the fact that it's open now for discussion, or it's a first draft of the leadership panel, um, and they're seeking input. Um, so, when you mentioned that it will not change a lot. Um, I, I think I should say, um, why ask input then? Um, so <laughs> that that made me question the comment you made. Oh, the headings, the headings, not, not the content, the headings. Because remember, I, I said that if we use them in the IGF, then we may get more information to add. So I'm talking about the headings and, and um, the little sub sub um, descriptions, I don't think those will change. I think what will change is because remember when they when they presented um, last year, 
They just didn't present a heading mm -hmm. and the description. Each heading had a broader um, set of content to it. So they may either add to that broad content or take away from that. So um, when I say it wouldn't change much, I mean the the heading and the subdescription. And yes, it may it may alter, but I don't think it's going to be that huge a change okay. in, in there. Okay, That's... thank you, thank you for the clarification okay. on that. Um, and then second to um the point Al Alga he um made um. Um, on whole and open versus universal. Um, that's, I think, the point why I would not choose for, uh, or my preference wouldn't be the first suggestion, because um, I think there's quite a lot of overlap between the the, the, the five different um, um, uh, sub-themes that are mentioned here. Um, and it would make it difficult to basket them uh, the the proposals that come in, and I think that 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 would be easier for us to to um, to do that task with uh, option three um, versus uh, versus option one. And with regards to option two, um, I think the first sub theme would be building on our digital future or um, something like that, um, and that's basically the same as the the main title. So I think. Um, if if we would go for that option, we it it would definitely need some some wordsmithing it there. Um, but I said it doesn't have my preference, and my preference would be number three. Chris and Bruna. Yeah. Good morning. Um, uh, so my just quite a specific concern. Um, in in following option one and the internet we want structure, it, it, I think we're going to have a reason for a number of discussions in this year's IGF about um, governance structures and approaches going into the WISIS plus 20 review. Um, so talking about those um, governance, improving the internet governance structures, I'm not quite sure where I see that fitting under those those five themes, um, because I think the internet we want is naturally a bit more focused on um, the internet and on, on on the sort of the actual um, well, what structure of the internet itself rather than on the governance. Um, but I do think we need to make sure we retain space in the program for discussion of the governance itself. Um, for all it, it's a bit navel gazing perhaps um but yeah so i i and i i think the my concern there with that first option is if we tie ourselves to the the format of the internet we want and the themes there we also don't really have the flexibility to say add something else to cover the governance and that would also take us to six sub themes which feels like quite a lot so that that would be my main sort of uh, preference for the third option um, is, is just that I think we need to make sure we do, do carve that space out. Bruna? Thanks, Carol. Um, same lines as Chris, and I also typed in a chat. Um, Chris and Alisa, actually, there is indeed a, a little bit of an overlap. Um, my second point about the internet we want, um, us adopting the internet we want points is that they all refer to core characteristics of the internet and not to the broader pool of discussions we often have in internet governance. So they don't or don't immediately relate to rights. They don't relate to governance processes, as Chris hi highlighted. They don't relate to participation or even child protection or even um, OASIS or many other processes goals that could be relevant for us to bring in here. We could obviously do this effort of like bringing in the, those themes, but that would allow us, uh, that would actually like mean that a lot of more work on that would need to happen. So perhaps what we can do is, um, I don't know, in the, the, the part, in the, on the third suggestion, we have a fourth theme about cooperation, right? And, and digital inclusion, no, no, cooperation and governance. Perhaps we can bring, we could eventually bring the internet we want namely in that. So 
the internet we want and digital cooperation or anything like that, just to hint at the process in some ways, and then also consider later in the year having dedicated spaces for the discussion of the paper. But I agree with um, a few of my colleagues. Um, although the paper is relevant and it's definitely something the MAG will be looking to, it's just a little bit confusing and overlapping as it hints more to the internet itself than the broader policy related processes we discussed at the at the IGF. That's all. Thanks, Bruna. Um, Tala? Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I like uh, number one and number three, uh, but if I could choose, maybe three would be slightly better for me. And I was looking through a potential uh, applicant of a session or somebody who is trying to submit a session proposal. And if I do a test, um, in the first uh, group of topics, I can submit a session, I guess, to any of them. So if we choose a topic on data, I could uh, put it in number one or number three or two, number three. So it can fit in any of these topics. So uh, for up potential applicants, I think uh, uh, topics in the third suggestion would provide more guidance as to where my proposals would fit better. So one option that I wanted to suggest, perhaps we could merge the keywords from first suggestion into the topics that are listed in number in the third suggestion. And perhaps we could uh, kind of uh, find the uh, golden alternative. Thank you. Otis, then Octavia. Hi, thanks, Carol. Um... Yeah, I think I would agree with um, talent on, on, on the hybrid between the first and the third. Um, but I would also maybe want to give a comment on the first um, that I don't think there's an overlap. Uh, for example, um, if you look at Poland open and universal and inclusive, I, I think they're two different things. Uh, for example, um, uh, AI in a large language model, a uh, chatbot, it might be open and uh, publicly used, but if it's not in as many languages as, as, as it possibly could be, and it's not as inclusive. So um, on, on, on the first one, I think um, uh, the two options um, don't overlap. But uh, yeah, I would agree with talent of a hybrid between the first and the third. Um, thank you, Chair, and and thanks, colleagues. I think Audis and, and Talent uh, very much cemented the point that I wanted to make as well. And I think Henriette in the in the in the chat also speaks to this point. Um, I am in favor of of the third option, and and I think that we can do a better job, perhaps, in explanations and in our communications around the third option to make links. I understand that this is a crucial time for the IGF. So as much as I understand, respect, and, and agree with uh, your point, Chair, that we, you know, making it very visible uh, that the leadership panel and the MAG are, are in unison and, 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 and that we want to strengthen that messaging. I, I do think that the third option is not just going to be better for people submitting, um, it's also going to be a better tool for us to strengthen why the multi-stakeholder approach, why the IGF, why in a, in this crucial year for us um, is important. Um, and and as I mentioned, Henriette's point on on WSIS um, is, is also very important um, to sort of cement that Jordan mentioned it very clearly in a year and in a time where internet governance is what we need to discuss first and foremost, um, I think I think the third option with Odyssey's comments and, and Talent's suggestion as well is gonna be um, an, an, a very clear strengthening um, of the IGF and the process. Thank you. Thank you, many. Hmm. 
Mene uh, Nesesiadu, MAG member. Um, I think uh, there were good points made by all fellow uh, members. Overall, it is important to showcase the sense of unity between the leadership panel, the work that they did with the internet we want, um, and the themes that we will select for this year's IGF. It was this sort of idea of making sure that we have a systematic way of reporting out of it. Um, but that said, there are more ways of doing that. And I see a lot of com commonalities, both in options two and three. Um, but then going into Jordan's point uh, made earlier about what uh, governments are looking for and the different multilateral uh, processes that we are tackling at this year's IGF, I would say that um, the third suggestion is a good uh, middle ground. Um, and I also liked Bruna's suggestion to merge um, the, 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 the theme um, on rights uh, I see it on, right on the screen um, so that we can keep the list shorter. Uh, this way we go back to, to our point that is important that we have a communicable agenda um, and something that we can easily showcase what we're bringing at this year's IGF. So yeah, overall, I, I think uh, I would be between option one and three uh, with the compromise that Bruna suggested. So thank you. Oh, uh, and one final point. If we are though to go with option uh, three um, and just building on, on what everyone said, it's important that we go back into how we actually report out of it. So, um, because we have that already in the internet we want. So when we go, if we go with option three, it's important to see what actually goes under each theme so that we have a nice framework and systematic way to report out of it. So that's my point. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm pretty okay with option, you know, the first option and the third option. Uh, but uh, in the third option, I think number three, uh, when we put rights uh, on it, uh, we are uh, probably make a, like a bias because rights, I, as I understand, is in number one and number two, because in number one, we are, we are talking about facing innovation or uh, facing innovation and, and for human uh, beings and number two we're talking about peace so i think the the notion of rights is essentially transversal to the three points and for that i will suggest to uh, remove and put it in, in all the numbers or or just remove it that's it thank you Thank you, Chair. Um, I would also suggest to go with the third one, with the third option. Um, but I have a comment on um, merging the third option and the fifth one, which is um, the inclusion and in rights. Uh, well, when we are talking about um, rights or human rights, we're talking about uh, protecting the human dignity and, and um, fostering like freedom in the online uh in the online world right uh but when we talk about inclusion we are also talking we are talking about access um access to um the use of technology so i really think that we keep those two in a separate way that's my suggestion thank you Bruna? Thanks, Carol. Um, just explaining to folks that um, maybe reinstating the obvious, um, inclusion is a right, right? So the reason why I suggested to bundle um, three and four together is that it would allow for some coherence, some cohesion for us as well. And also because um, we don't normally, in, in the human rights um space we don't normally do the correlation between human rights and universe um it's a bit um complicated perhaps a no-go in that sense um i like that we're trying to aim for a different kind of a different kind of language but it's it's not very common to correlate the two um but in any case i raised my hand to make a suggestion for 
uh, like the compromise suggestion, right? Because um, if we were to bring up, oh, someone just deleted my suggestion, but if we were to bring up the the improving digital governance and if we were to mention the internet we want there, then we could do number four, um, improving digital governance for the internet we want. And it could be like a namely mentioned to the paper and to the, the leadership panel process. And also kind of like just a heads up to folks that if you want to discuss the paper, then you should come to this one track and, and it's going to be the one that's um be liderating um, a lot of this, leading a lot of those discussions. So just raise my hand to, to suggest that um, so it's clear for everyone. Thank you, Bruna. Olga? Thank you, Carol. I was just thinking very briefly about the uh, the Internet We Want paper, and uh, it's probably a little bit early this year to uh, use it as the structure of, uh, for the IGF agenda, because uh, if uh, it will be uh, happening as it is uh, currently designed, so that uh, this uh, um, the internet we want will be used as the roadmap for the IGF and to report on the progress uh, which will be achieved against uh, each of the uh, goals which will be identified during this current open consultation process. Then probably in the future we will have a lot of space and opportunities to use specifically this structure, but maybe at that point that would be clearer because uh, uh, the goals and targets uh, will be uh, specified uh, in a more detailed way based on this consultation, uh, which is currently happening. Uh, so, I think overall this is uh, this is a great idea, but but probably we will have uh, space to uh, to work in this framework uh, in the future. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, we also have in this, this section to to um, make some decisions on the overall program. So I we can give this another maybe ten minutes and then decide what we're going to do. Um, if we have a large amount of persons um, wanting to try merge one and three that that'll take a little bit more time so we'll we'll have to put that to the floor whether we want to go one only three only or a merge of one and three Uh, I'll repeat that. So we're looking at merging one and three. And so on the floor, we're asking whether or not you want to put some effort into doing that. So I just need a response on that one. So it either stays on the table or comes off. And then Lito. Um, regarding the fact that we uh, have little time left, um, and um, I th I have heard quite a lot of support for option three. Um, I would be fine with going with option three, um, and don't need or don't really feel we need to use much more time to to see how we can merge it, um, and if um, 
that time would be consumed to um, merge it, then I would um, like to ask the people who wants to merge it to do that in a coffee break um, so we can uh, use the time uh, to uh, to get to the other stuff on the agenda. Lito? I'm also not in favor of trying to merge the, the, the two suggestions, but instead uh, choose one or the other uh, according to our preferences, but because we risk uh, not only the, the time consuming of that task, but also losing some coherence in the, in the, in the while, while trying to build a, a new option out of the, the two. So I am against trying to merge uh, the, the, the two suggestions. Jordan? Thank you, um, Carol. Uh, I, I think I'm against the merger effort just because the time taken. I wouldn't mind helping to do that if that's what we wanted to do, but I think we would need to make sure that it works coherently and that will take maybe a little bit more than a coffee break. Um, so uh, I think the other point is that the um, the leadership panel has this consultation process that's underway now, right? Or yeah, trying to use the form at the moment, which is a challenge. Um, and they've said they're going to update the paper, right, with following that input. Um, and I think all of the things that are in the paper fit within the kind of categories that are in proposal three. So what it does do is allow a nice alchemy, if you like, of the leadership panel led process that's obtaining this feedback and hopefully coming back to propose some concrete goals, which then then be considered in the context of the IGF. It's not as quite a straight match, but it lets us kind of bring two tracks of thinking and consideration together at the event here in Riyadh in December. So I don't think it's any, there's no effort to sort of um, uh, not respect the, the leadership panel's thinking. But I think that the input that it's going to generate, which is going to be incredibly valuable, will come to play uh, regardless. So that's that's where I'm thinking on that. Chris, then many. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you, Carol. Um, I would be wary of of trying to merge more from the perspective of I, I think. Um, it, it would run the risk of muddying the waters a little in terms of the internet we want and in terms of the work that the leadership panel itself is doing. Um, I think one option was certainly to, to sort of ad adhere to that structure of internet we want quite closely. Um, I'm not, I, I think there's been a lot of discussion of that and, and we've sort of probably come to some consensus that that doesn't quite work for this year's IGF. In terms of, I, I would say making a clean break is the the better option in that regard then, because I think we don't want to distract from the internet we want as a sort of standalone and very logically structured um, document and, and approach for the leadership panel. And I think if we tried to merge some of that language and those those sort of elements into a different set of sub-themes, um, it would possibly be, be confusing. And I, I, I think we... I certainly wouldn't want to detract attention from the internet we want itself as a standalone thing. Thanks. Runa and then Samir. Oh, Thanks, sorry. Um, also I'm very- so, Sorry, hold on, sorry. I don't sorry. Um, sorry, Repeat Bruna. The points made by colleagues before. I just, um, again, just reinforcing the idea that this is still a work in process. Um, community is going to offer criticism to that or comments or constructive criticism for improvement. And there is a lot of um, overlapping. I still think, um, even though folks are trying to, to clarify that. Um, but my point is, it's like, I like the description for number five in the first suggestion. So I my, another kind of compromise thing could be that if we're keeping number five in the third suggestion, then we can bring the subtitle, the subtext 
um, down because it's very concise and it's very direct and, and it's purely related to um, human rights discussion. So we can maybe perhaps do a second compromise in that sense. Um, and then, yeah, just I, I don't really think we can we can um, like we, we have the time to change these documents any further. We used a lot of time on the discussion yesterday. So just so it's even clear for folks, like perhaps we can do option three with a small tweak on number four, um, improving mo improve digital governance for the internet we want, and then make it clear in the subtext that that's going to be the place. I, I feel like that will be the best compromise we can achieve right now. Many. Thank you. Um, I would also like to support option three. I think it's yeah, well reflective of um, what we want to bring at this year's IGF. I support Bruna's earlier suggestion, again, for uh, the merging of uh, option three and, and rights and inclusion, um, and then also keeping the Internet with one reference uh, in point four. Um, and again, uh, we can always go back uh, and see and identify commonalities with the Internet We Want paper, not explicitly noting them in, in the descriptions, but um, for example, in point number three on, on digital inclusion in the world, and um, it's, it's uh, in my view, a clear connection towards um, the, um, uh, the, the, the point uh, made on the Internet We Want paper as well um, on, on uh, inclusivity. So... Um, yeah, uh, I would support option three. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I would just like to uh, share some idea if people are interested in merging one and three. Uh, about innovation, I just would like to add that innovation is not limited to internet per se. It also involves some other things which are independent of internet, uh, like scientific education, enabling environment within the uh, state uh, countries. So in the, the two themes that, that can come out of these uh, one and three are rights and the right to development. Development is also a right. Uh, but linking it to the VISIS process, uh, you will see that uh, these, these terms or words like people-centric, development-oriented, inclusive, digital society, this will be a recurring theme as we move towards VISIS review. So maybe something like harnessing internet for rights and sustainable development, if the MEG could consider this uh, as an option, if there is some interest or appetite for merging these issues. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So what's on the floor at this point is for um, to find out whether or not we want to merge or um, one and three. So let's see how many people are not in favor of merging one and three. On the floor is the question, how many persons are not in favor of merging one and three? So in the chat, you could put a plus one and we will take a look at um, who's in the room. I really need the online people to give their input, please. This is tick. Oh, right. So Chris has a tick, so that's good. You can actually see. Okay. Thirty more seconds. <laughs> okay. All right, so <clears throat> we're gonna take off the floor merging one and three. So now what's on the floor is do we want to do you want to go with number one? That's on the floor. Oh, let me rephrase that so you could say yes or no. Is 
If you're in favor of number one, raise your hands or put a plus one. If you're in okay. favor. Sorry, Carol. The problem is that, oh, yeah, first suggestion. The uh, internet would be one option. There's the way it would look on the okay. screen. You were asking about one of the sub themes. So, yeah. Asking if you um for if you're in favor of the first suggestion, raise your hands or put plus one in the chat. Okay, so one is off the table as well. We have first um, not much support for number one. So in three minutes, <laughs> we'll look at number three. So we could, Celine, if we could just move number three to the to the top. It's at the top. Uh, now let's take into consideration what tweaking we want to do. Okay, so um, I see we have some hands in the online um, chat. So we have, okay, one hand down. We have Octavia. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, just seconding Jim, I see Jim. Um... Pendergast also mentioned this. I just wanted to make sure, maybe I'm a stickler for rules. Um, this this voting um, is an indication, right? And it is it for MAG or everyone? I I, I just, I wasn't sure I caught that, uh, Carol. Um, like, just because I know you have systems. No, all, all decisions are for season. the MAG. It's a MAG meeting. MAG is making decisions today. So it's... Anything we've asked is for the mag. Right, right. I'm I'm so I just didn't catch that in the um yeah. Thank you so much for, for clarifying that for me. For bringing it up and thank you, Jim, as well. <clears throat> so we're now um looking at what changes, if any, we're for number three. Um I think we can always make changes to the content. So let's look at um, just the titles for the suggestion um, suggestion three. So we're just looking at the title. We can always take time to um, clean up the description. So number one, harnessing innovation and balancing risks in digital space. Any changes? So floor open if you want to make a change. Okay, so um, title number one remains. Now we're on title number two, the digital contribution to peace and sustainability. Anybody um, comments open for that one? the digital contribution to peace and sustainability. Okay, no comments. So we accept, we are going to accept the digital contribution to peace and sustainability. Number three, empowering rights and digital inclusion in the world. Um, and note, please note that rights and is in brackets. So we're on number three for title. Any comments? I thanks, Carol. I think... on Jordan, um, many, Alan, Alga. Uh, uh, thanks, Carol. I think the rights and was an effort to um 
like save us down to four instead of five. So I think it, I think the suggestion, I can't remember who it was from, sorry, was to remove the fifth one and have empowering human rights and digital inclusion in the world. Um, I'd support that change or leaving the same. I don't mind either way. Thank you, Chair. As I was saying, uh, I think rights are transversal to number one, number two, and number three. So I, I find no need to put rights just in number three. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to support the inclusion of the word, uh, the word rights under three. And that will mean that, well, we will go back to point five, but uh, I think that covers um, sub-theme number five as well. So everything I think is, is well merged um, from that perspective and just number three, so. Alga Bruna Lito. I'm fine with uh, adding rights here, but I would make it uh, human rights, not just rights and also I feel empowering is not uh, exactly the word, uh, the right web, which uh, can be used in this uh, formulation. Uh, I think something like advancing or fostering uh, would be better than empowering. I just don't feel you can empower rights or inclusion. It's it's not about that. You can empower people to do something, but not the rights as such. Um, thank you, Olga. So I think she has a point there, so we might want to try to um, think about that. You can't um, empower rights. You can empower people. Um, next is Bruna, then Mr. Lita. The same lines as Olga. Um, so perhaps fostering human rights and digital inclusion in the world is the the sub thing we're looking at um and it's a really fair point from olga also because number five um i typed in the chat um the way it's written is a bit restrictive it, it hints that human rights can only happen in the digital space so that will be the problem for me and also the reason why i suggested the merging i think it's relevant for us to speak of um inclusion also as a human rights beyond just the inclusion pers perspective that's all I just have a, a question, Bruna. Are you saying that um, inclusion is part of rights and therefore we don't need the word inclusion? Clarification from, from you, Bruna. Sorry, Kara, can you repeat? I, the internet um, dropped a little bit. Okay, and I was asking if, if you're saying that inclusion is part of rights and therefore is not needed in the title. Maybe no. we could just put it in the, okay, please yeah, explain yeah. again, thank you. Sorry, that's not what I'm saying. I, I mean, there's a lot of people that can that have been considering um, accessing the internet as a human rights, but I think the way we have been evolving in terms of language at the IGF is to also mention that. So my suggestion for this topic would be fostering human rights and digital inclusion in the world or just fostering human rights and digital inclusion. So that can be both together in the same category, that's all. Thank you. Lito. Thank you, uh, Lito Ibarra. Uh, part of what, what I was going to say has been said, especially by Olga. So I, I support fostering human rights and digital inclusion. That's it. Uh, talent. Uh, thank you, Chair. My proposal would be to keep three and five. Uh, three would focus on digital inclusion, so it would be fostering digital inclusion without the rights. And five would be human rights in the digital universe or uh, version of it, so that both uh, inclusion and human rights would get own um, kind of uh, attention, sufficient attention. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, 
Thank you. Uh, this is Lisa Hever for the record. Um, I'm very happy with um, the way option three has now been uh, formulated to fostering human rights uh, and digital inclusion. I don't think in the world is necessary. Um, if um, we would go for the option uh, that um, um, uh, Talon just mentioned, um, so um, separating three and five, then in that case, I, I'd be in favor of, um, um, if you want to say digital inclusion, I, I in that case, I would also uh, include digital connectivity. Um, um, so if, if we would go for five themes, then I would say something with digital inclusion and digital connectivity, because I think um, um, it would would highlight the importance of connectivity um, in, in that area. Um, and then we would have sufficient um, um, uh, space to also emphasize it, but uh, I, I, my my primary favor would be uh, to to have four themes. So thanks. Thank you, um, Samir. Just a suggestion from semantics point of view: human rights for IGF, saying something without human rights in digital space, will be something. Uh, I, I I feel it will be very uh, odd for IGF only talking human rights without saying human rights in digital space, because the relevance of IGF is for digital space, for the internet connectivity, for the uh, virtual realm. So maybe um, the third option as it is, but fostering human rights and inclusion in digital space. This will be a better formulation if uh, others consider it right. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Sabahir Mag member for the record. So I still keep um, option number two and option number five, uh, option number three and five in a separate way. Um, but I do support what Alisa said. Uh, maybe um, I suggest fostering digital inclusion and connectivity um, and keeping the human rights in a separate sub team. Thank you. Olga, then Karina. Uh, actually, there was a comment in the chat by Neil, which I wanted uh, to support because uh, in the way we formulate uh, currently the categories, uh, they all look more like action oriented. And it's only the second uh, point at the moment that is uh, that does not have an action in it, is not studying uh, from the web. So maybe for, for the sake of uniformity, it would be good also um, to formulate them all uh, in the same way. For example, for the second, it could be something like... Uh, strengthening or we can come up with any better word but just uh, to make it sound uniform and also for the third uh, which was just added uh, in the digital space i don't think this is only about digital space this is also about the uh, the offline space equally so maybe it's more it's more about i don't know in the digital age something would be better than just in the digital space Thank you, Chair. Karina Virarda, for the record. Um, I would like to express my support for fostering empowerment of human rights and digital inclusion and suggest removing the word world as from my perspective is geographically limited to its scope of actions. That's my opinion. Thank you. Bruna Octavia. Thanks, Carol. Um, same case. I do believe that um, if we were, I, I like the action lines, and and thanks to the person that brought that point up. I I do believe that it's it's a great point. Like 
we're using the subtheme to send messages. We, we're doing the actionable items you talk so highly about. So it, it's also relevant. So when I read this, this kind of list, it says that the IGF is going to foster human rights and inclusion. It's going to say it's also it also says that the IGF is in, it aims to improve digital governance. So it's also a very clear message that we can frame pretty easily for the upcoming messages from the event and the workshops and so on. Um, my point here is more about is more about us adding um, other layers. Um, connectivity is a relevant world, um, world, and it's it's relevant for the discussions. But also, like, there is so many more other words that could be added here. Like, so fostering gender participation and human rights. But I'm not doing that because I also see um, human rights as an overarching kind of discussion that um, also brings in a lot of those debates into so. And, and really like a lot of the discussions we had yesterday was for having a very kind of economic and small list of sub teams. So maybe just maybe a request for us to keep the four. Um, the four are interesting. We're also talking about very relevant things in a way that should gather and, and helps us um, send a, a bigger compromise to the community and perhaps not add connectivity here because um, to me it's, it's very kind of like in between the lines of debates on inclusion and human rights and access to the internet and so on and so forth. That's not to say it's not gonna be discussed in the forum, it, it will be, but it's a good reminder from yesterday. And I think it was Lito that was saying that, right? The fact that some themes are not mentioned in the sub themes of the IGF doesn't mean these discussions won't be addressed. It just means that we need a smaller kind of speech for this small bit of the program that um, that's concise and makes sense to the community. That's that's all I wanted to say. Okay, I just want to put my input on this one. Um, I I. I think that there is a need to separate the human rights from um, digital inclusion. To me, they're two separate um, things. But if you're going to keep it together, we need to make sure that we're talking about human rights when it comes to internet or digital. We don't want to cross over or make it so broad that it looks like the IGF is a human rights organization. So um, I'm in support of separating the two. But if you keep the two together, we need to make sure that we emphasize that we're talking about the internet or the digital space. Take Jordan, and then I will put two things to the floor. Uh, two two quick comments. I think um, I I don't mind keeping them separate either. I think if we do keep them separate in the digital inclusion one, we should make a point in the comments about talking about the importance of universal connectivity. It seems to be a, a big issue that is coming up, and I can't remember what my second point was. So that's fine. <laughs> Okay, so on the floor, we merge um, human rights and inclusion. So if you're in favor of the merge of human rights and inclusion, um, raise hands or plus one. <laughs> There's neutral. <laughs> so what's neutral, zero? I don't know. <laughs> So in the room, I'm not seeing anything. I could see activity um, online, but I'm not seeing any. Whoa, maybe I need to repeat the the question. Okay, the what's on the floor is merging human rights with digital inclusion. If you're in favor, show hands or put plus one, or you could put a zero. <laughs> I'm assuming zero is not just abstaining. Okay. Wow.
that if you could do Doesn't look clear. <laughs> oh, I see. Yes. Ah, what is it? Well, this neutral point is at the end. Multiple. Only I only see like two zeros. Yeah, I mean that's the way it's done here. No. Oh, okay. What a more people. One. But the new building. Okay. Okay. They don't have it. Yes. Okay. So. okay. So we have more persons in favor of the merging. Well, <laughs> the majority, I suppose, really is. It doesn't matter which one. Um, they'll go with either one. But that wasn't the um, on the floor. So on the floor was to merge, and so there'll be a merge of topics. So number four. So we're now on to number four. Do we need any changes to the phrasing of number four? Okay, so sorry, just to go back to three, we chose to merge, but what will be the final text? Thanks. What's the final? Thanks, Alyssa. What's the final text for three? Okay, so we have uh, here fostering human rights and inclusion, fostering digital human rights and inclusion. No? I really don't think we need to, we shouldn't leave it open, human rights alone open, because we're talking about human rights. Um, internet or digital. Saba, Bruna, Octavia. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, so if we are merging, um, earlier we we were saying that um, inclusion is also part of human rights. So uh, maybe can we change the order in that way, fostering digital inclusion in human rights? Thank you. But are you saying putting the digital first will cover human rights and inclusion? And then Octavia. It, was it me or Octavia? I think it was you. I don't know. 
um sorry carol i cannot hear you well but i'll come in then um just to say that i don't think we need the addition of digital to human rights because it's already under the igf framework it's already under a meeting about internet governance so we don't need to do this kind of extra qualification of the whole thing and also a lot of the debates on the topic in the past um I don't know, 10 or 15 years have been about the qualification of human rights as a standalone term that applies to the digital mm -hmm. age or that applies to life in general and the digital age itself. Like we no longer um, do, do this qualification of digital rights or digital mm -hmm. human rights or anything in that sense. So just to make that clear for everyone that um, if it's already happening under the IGF framework, um, and we have this principle, as Josephine is, is listening on the chat, of respecting for human rights, then we might as well just follow the human rights um, language and, and not um, do any further qualifications in that sense. I, I'm going to just um, make a comment on that. I've looked at proposals that have been put forward and when they talk about human rights, they don't talk about human rights and internet or human rights and digital. It's just straight across the board, human rights. So I want to stress that we don't want to look or we don't want to have a human rights um, forum. We want to have a section on human rights and the digital um, space. We, we, we want to make it clear to proposal writers that we're talking about, and so we want to focus them on digital. And uh, all, quite a few of the other ones talk about digital. Number two has digital. Number three talks about digital. Number four talks about... Uh, so saying that we don't have to have digital, then does that mean we take digital out of all of them? Uh, Octavia. Thank you, Carol. Um, I think you raised a good point, and I know colleagues have as well. Um, yeah, Octa o Octavia Rund, uh, MAG member for the for the record. Uh, it's a valid point. I think there's a couple of things in terms of language that we have to address. Um, as a part of this community for more than 20 years, absolutely agree. We don't, it is holistic. My presence, my ident identity exists on and offline. We've cemented that. And in this um, particular space that the MAG and the IGF is, I would go with consistency. If we are going to be using digital, um, you know, I think it's a fair point to then just put it up front and have that everywhere, even though it's repetitive. Um, <clears throat> I don't think we need to address human rights specifically as digital or not. We can also be doing a disservice of saying we have to have it everywhere because each and every point in itself is important and needs to have its own space. Sometimes that requires a digital, sometimes it doesn't. Um, <clears throat> my point here is, 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 is with fostering. So it's just to say if 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 you all and we consent to having digital in there, I would have it first. I don't have a preference for whether it's digital human rights and inclusion. I don't really, you know, so the digital inclusion and as long as the and is there and not in, um, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. However, fostering to me doesn't translate what I've heard and uh, the last couple of days. And so advancing for me is more concrete. It's more actionable. So advancing digital inclusion in human rights for me is is a stronger headline um but but other than that um yeah uh, th th this is not the hill uh, the hill I'll die on um so in the interest of moving on the agenda as well I'm perfectly fine with um with any end result that we get okay so the last two um on this will be Jordan and um many Circling around some useful formulations, I was just going to say, I agree with you, Carol, that if we got a proposal that came in, however this is worded, that dealt with human rights in in a way that didn't connect with digital technology, 
we have to rule it out as the MAG because it is the Internet Governance Forum. So whether it has the word digital right beside human rights or not, I think we should all be able to agree that that's the case. Because otherwise, we just, we're just we not the Internet Governance Forum, we're the Globe Governance Forum, we're the Universe Governance Forum. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Carol. Uh, my name is Seattle, the MAG member. I agree with Jordan's point. I think we are at the IGF. We are holding um, a forum that's under the theme of uh, a multi-stakeholder digital future. So we have an additional layer on digital um, and we can always define it uh, in the selection process and make sure that we're talking about digital um, human rights. So um, I agree with the the, the formulation, um, which we see, I think on screen now. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay, um, thank you. We have one last um, late show of hand uh, piece, and then I'll put a question to the floor. Thank you, Chair. I, I don't have much to add, but I just wanted to emphasize that uh, human rights applies online and as well as offline. So we should uh, be able to know that according to the UN, you Human Rights Commission resolution that our human, when we talk about human rights, we talk about human rights online and human rights offline. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so on the floor, change fostering to advancing. That's on the floor. Show of hands to change fostering to advancing. Okay, so we have agreed to advancing. Next on the floor, include digital. Show of hands if you want to include digital. And where, where, oh, where did you put it? Where did it go? <laughs> okay, so I, I thought we'd had, I, I see it's changing now. So before it was advancing um, digital human rights and inclusion, but now it's reading advancing human rights and inclusion in the digital age. Now I have to rephrase it because the last time I looked, it was digital. Um, okay, so the first question then is, do we want to have the term digital in number three? Then we'll decide how. Um, a show of hands to include digital in number three. My going yes. Online? I'm not uh, online people, please. Okay, thank you very much. So we're, <clears throat> so we're gonna add the word digital. Now in what format are we going to add digital? Okay, so here. I'm just going to put two things to the floor at this point, okay? So are we going to have, let's say, show of hands for advancing um, digital human rights and inclusion, because that's what thought was there first. So if you want advancing digital human rights and inclusion, show of hands or plus. No, no, there were two things on there. Previously, used to be digital inclusion. Right. So I want a ver. I want to. So it was changed, mm -hmm. but we didn't have a consensus for the change. So I want to make sure that people are okay with taking out um with moving digital, at the beginning of the sentence. Okay, we didn't have a consensus on that. So show of hands if you want to remain having advancing digital human rights and inclusion.
So there are going to be two more things to the floor. So the first thing again to the floor. So um, this time it's a change around of whether or not you have human rights or inclusion first. So on the floor, um, show of hands for persons that want advancing digital inclusion and human rights. So the difference between the first one and this one is that we've swapped around the end. Show of hands for advancing digital inclusion and human rights. Show of hands. So on the floor is a show of hands to use advancing um, digital inclusion and human rights. That's what's on the floor. So in the room, I need you, please, uh, in the room, just a plus one or a minus one. Um, let's not um, put in what your, how you would want to word it. We're at the point of um, choosing if we're going to have the, all right, so let's clarify. After we've said, okay, Wyman. Um, yeah, this is Mingo, you and Dessa. Uh, I, sorry to jump in at this part of the discussion, but I just like to highlight could be obvious to, to, to some uh, MAC members here. Uh, of course, your human rights, uh, there is the Human Rights Council and also supported by the, the Human Rights High, uh, High Commissioner. Uh, and I think that's pointed to human rights, uh, the, the resolution that we are all familiar that apl applicable online and offline. So I just like to 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 cautious that that we still have to be within the scope of the IGF. Uh, so the the point how I mean that the phrasing of course is a decision of Mac, uh, but the subject of the discussion, including the that would also guide workshop submissions among others, that will still be confined to the mandate of the Internet Governance Forum. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Give me a second, please, thanks. Okay, so with that clarification from Wyman, I'm going to put on the floor again, and I think I had a, a further explanation. So we just we're asking if persons prefer because I'm going to go back and ask if if you want advancing human rights and inclusion in the digital age. So we're not on that part yet. We're not asking at this point advancing human rights and inclusion in the digital age. We are now asking advancing digital inclusion and human rights. If that's your preferred choice, um, raise your hand or plus one. In the, in the chat? That a three or a zero? Okay, good. So um, now looking at advancing human rights and inclusion in the digital age. That's on the table. Show of hands for advancing human rights and inclusion in the digital age. Okay, good. So there we have it. Thank you very much. We now have our four subtitles. And because we, three, three, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're now at number four. So that means you've worked through your break. Um, if you want to grab a coffee whilst we look at number four, you can, but I know you don't want to miss the excitement. <laughs> um, so let's go on to number four. And number four is improving multi-stakeholder digital governance for the internet we want. So we're still op are we open now for changes or whatever for number four. We're not, we don't have any 
thing on the floor to vote. We're now looking at the point where you, it's an open discussion on number four. Peace. Peace, then Chris, then many. Go ahead, peace. Oh, um, you've taken your hand down. Okay. Um, Chris. Yes. Thank you, Carol. Um, I, I think I'm reiterating a point that was made earlier, which was that maybe it doesn't make sense to include the multi-stakeholder word here. Maybe just have it as improving digital governance, um, because I think we're looking at a broad diversity of digital governance um, modes, including multi-stakeholder, but also how that intersects with other multilateral and, and other um, other uh, modes. So I, I think we can simplify this by removing the multi-stakeholder word from this sub thing. Carol, my name is Mag member. I think, um, well, uh, I support uh, including the word uh, multi-stakeholder here, as well as the reference to the internet we want. So, thank you. Bruna, the floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> there is a hard time listening this part. No, just to, to say that, uh, thanks, Chris, for bringing back my point from earlier on. I do think that improving or enhancing digital governance for the internet we want could be a, a good one. Um, enhancing, like, hints back at the enhanced cooperation process from 20 years ago or something that could be interesting for the discussion as well. And although I understand the point in the chat about the internet we want being from who, it's not uh, a statement from the IGF, it is more like a reference um, from uh, to the, the leadership panel paper. So we can even put it in um, in between quotes and, and things like that, just so it's clear that it's a reference to the paper and the process, that's all. Alga? Uh, so, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's the one where we have the most agreement. Uh, I'm also in favor of removing multi-stakeholder for the reasons that uh, Chris mentioned. Uh, so, and to keep in it uh, um, for the internet we want without the brackets. Uh, so just uh, improving digital go governance for the internet we want. Uh, and maybe if we want to make it clear that this is uh, uh, the reference to the uh, leadership panel, um, uh, paper, we could add this abbreviation IWW. Um, thank you, Abdurrahman Tari. <clears throat> I'm speaking my, from my capacity as a member. And, 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 and I think this section is about governance and um, definitely strengthening multi, multi stakeholder um, approach is, 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 is a key focus. But I was thinking about what about the emerging technology, especially AI or AI governance, because if you look to the governance of Internet, it's need improvement. But if the governance of AI is not existent, there is a lot of hot topics about about the emerging technology that mainly using Internet or any growing because of use of Internet. So I was thinking about what about AI governance uh, and other emerging technology and if we want to drive proposal on that, probably we need to to get to the title of, of this uh, sub theme, uh, and, and and this is just a suggestion or uh, an idea. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to put <clears throat> two things to the floor. Um, I'm I'll say what the two things are first. 
and then we will um, ask for your vote. So the first thing on the floor, include, uh, do not include multi-stakeholder. Do not include multi-stakeholder. Show of hands or in the room, plus one. Not to include multi-stakeholder. Show of hands and plus one. Okay, so we have more in favor of um, not to include and many more. It doesn't matter to them. It doesn't matter what you said, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yes, no opinion. Okay, good. So we will take out multi-stakeholder. Um, so the second part is on for the internet we want. Improving digital governance for the internet we want. On the floor, include for the internet we want. On the floor, include for the internet we want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the consensus is to have um, for the internet we want. So we it number four now reads improving digital governance for the internet we want. Thank you. Oh, others. Um, yeah, I would like to reiterate uh, what Abdulrahman just said about AI governance. Uh, since it was a recurring uh, uh, in the thematic inputs uh, across all regions and stakeholders, uh, so maybe considering. Uh, improving the AI and digital governance for the internet we want. Say it again. Improving AI and digital governance for the internet we want. Yeah, but yeah, okay. I I understand that. I think something like that can go into the description. So we wanna make sure, um, talk about, um, emphasize, or not emphasize, but ensure it's included in there. Jordan, Octavia. To, to agree with you strongly, Carol, I think that um, we should do the hooks of the types of governance that we want to see focused on in the description. And I think AI would be first on the list given all of the attention that's happening to it in the world. And um, uh, I think rather than injecting the specific topics into the into the title lines of the themes, it's better to have them in the description. So when people are like, well, I, I really care about AI, which was top of the list, right? Where does it fit? And they'll see AI and be like, oh yeah, it goes there. Um, so I, I, I prefer to keep it as it is worded there now. Okay, so you have a two minute bathroom break and coffee break, two minutes, two minutes. <laughs> Except if I can't get my coffee first on the line. <laughs> so we'll, we'll be back at quarter past 11 a quarter past the hour for persons online.
Okay, so it seems like we're working ourselves down to only having a half hour for lunch. Hmm. Okay, so sorry, I, it was brought to my attention that we missed out number two. So we're going to have a discussion on number two. The digital contribution to peace and sustainability. So I'm just going to give you a little definition of sustainability. Um, sustainable practices support ecological, human, and economic health and vitality. Okay. So let's look at um, number two and, and the wording. Um, the digital contribution to peace and sustainability. Floor is open for discussion on that. Octavia, Bruna, Zhao, and Quezai. Bruna. Octa um, Zhao. Oh, thank Quezai, you. Octavia. I, I wasn't able to unmute myself. Um, Chair, I'm I'm so sorry. My point was before the break. And I was hoping it's just not coming back to me. I'm very sorry. Um, I completely forgot the point that I was going to make. Uh, but it hadn't. It it had nothing to do with number two. It had to do with uh, AI. Thank you. Um, sorry, sorry, chair. I'll I'll be I'll be brief. Uh, I think we're uh, doing a disservice to ourselves and to the participants that will be submitting if we put. Just give me a moment, please, Octavia. Give me give me a moment. Um, we're not going to go back to changing any of the things that we've agreed on. However. If there are things that you need that you think needs to be expressed in either one of those, we're going to send out a document where you can try to include it into the description. Okay, so um, if you have hands up for going back to number one, three, or four, there's no going back in terms of the title. However, there's still an opportunity to stress certain things within the description. So you're gonna be given time to do that and in our next online meeting, we will um, approve the description parts. Okay, so Octavia, is your hand still up or down with regards to It's that? Down. So Thank right you. up, okay, thanks. Thank so we're now on number two only. Okay, number two only. So go ahead, Bruna. Thanks, Carol. Um, and it's just August's comment from earlier on that we need to evolve this number two to an action point. So um, either contributing to, uh, I don't know, like building a digital contribution to peace and sustainability or something like that. But we need the, the verb a little bit in, in the beginning. And I know Chris or someone else had another suggestion in the chat. So just referring to that, that's the only kind of um, change I would like to suggest. Bruna, Olga? Yeah, I think we the, can... Sorry, uh, Olga, sorry. Olga, sorry. Um, no problem. Zao first. Uh, yeah, sorry. Zao first. Well, I just uh, look at, uh, review the mandate of the IGF. The first one is discuss public policy issues related to key elements of internet governance in order to foster the sustainability, st 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 robustness, security, st st stability, and development of the internet. So I, when I look at the several topics, I think the development has not been given enough importance. So maybe I wonder we can add development in the topic of second one. For example, the digital contribution to peace, development, and the system sustainability, or it could be the digital contribution to peace and sustainable de development. That's my point, thank you. Is 
Olga? Yeah, just to supplement it uh, with the action point, so we can say uh, enhancing uh, digital contribution as it is now, or digital action to peace and uh, sustainability. That's it. Um, Kweta, and then Samir. Thank you. Um, and my capacity as an observer, I just uh, I have a question if under uh, digital contribution to peace and sustainability, does it cover uh, providing access and connectivity in area of instabilities and natural disasters, the alternative means of access and connectivity in areas of instability and uh, let's say natural disaster? Does it cover it? Is it covered here? Or I would request if it's not covered, then to be part of the subtopics in this. Thank you, Sumer. Thank you, Carol. I, I see this sub team as an opportunity for the IGF to build its linkage with SDGs, and mm -hmm. SDGs will cover every aspect. In 15 SDGs, we have peace also one of the goals. And we have disaster risk reduction also one of the goals. Sustainable climate resilient action also, it's uh, covered by them. So um, I would like to put for the consideration of Meg a contribution of uh, uh, the digital contribution to uh, sustainable development or sustainable development goals. Thank you. Jordan? Uh, thanks. I was going to react to Xiao's um, suggestion. I think um, I would prefer um, if it said peace, development, and sustainability rather than just sustainable development, because I think we're trying to focus the discussion on a few topics. And if we reference the SDGs, the SDGs are a framework for the entire evolution of global society, economy, environment. So we would be making the scope very, very, very much bigger. Um, but I think development is an important um, foundation of what the internet can offer. So I'd support um, adding that in. There's lots of forums in the UN to discuss the SDGs. We don't need to turn the IGF into another one. Okay, so I'm just gonna to make a com uh, personal comment. Um, I think that, well, the question I should say in my mind is, does development go in number one because you're harnessing? Um, harnessing mean that I can take what's there, to in my mind, I can take what's there and improve it, or I can look at what's not there and develop it. So to me, um, when we talk about development, I, I see it in the harnessing or in number one. So there's a possibility of putting that to development. And I agree if we need to 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 look at our mandate and make sure that we're we're following it. So maybe we can use development um in number one under harnessing as opposed to adding development in number two. And that's just my comment. So I'm talking from my capacity as a MAG member for record. Um, when I looked at this one, I just was thinking about how far, how generous, general we will be on this topic. And I was thinking, are we talking about the, the, the business continuity of internet during crisis time? Or are we talking about the sustainability of the internet itself by all its components? And, and, uh, I will back to refer to the discussion that Fint just uh, uh, thinking about now, Fint Serf and, and, and leadership, uh, where we think that maybe there is a new sustainability challenge dedicated to the digital assets. And, and again, this is an area that we have. And the other side of this, this item is that, uh, is this the place where we're going to discuss risks or, or, or challenges like fragmentation, like cybersecurity, like an area. And if we want to do that, it's a question how we want to phrase it in a way that 
focused on 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 internet and fostering the internet uh, from the protection side from uh, yani a sustainability side so i think that this is yani when we talk about peace on that context it should be very clarified on that perspective thank you chris go ahead thank you carolyn at uh, chris buckridge for the record, I realize I haven't been introducing myself. Um, technical community mag member. Um, I actually quite like the um the structure that's there now, the digital contribution to peace, development, and sustainability. Um, I would add a serial comma, but that's just me. Um I I think the SDGs are a, an important aspect here. I would put them in the description and and sort of make clear that there are those links, because I think it is um useful and particularly you know as we're going into the WISIS review and sort of those broader discussions I think it's it's important to um give give some just in indication of the IGF's contribution to those SDGs um but I I think in the overarching title of the sub theme it, it makes it a bit too long and probably a bit too restrictive so I I think I, I like that structure now and moving the SDGs into the description thank you Is is it me, Carol? Oh, no. I will, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Bruna, so please yeah. speak. I saw the Ramon yes. also yeah, raising the floor. and I assumed it was me. Thank you so much. Um, the microphones are muted. <laughs> Just to say that I also support um, the addition of sustainable um, or sustainability in the in number two. I think it, it's a good framing for digital contribution to peace, sustainability and development. Um, and then we close um, this this kind of topic, right? Because my concern is that the more we open the discussion, the more we'll feel like adding here. And then like we have a lot more topics like we have cyber, we have AI, we have um I don't know, external influence operations, we have disinformation and a lot more topics to discuss. And, and to me right now, the discord list we get, we got is really good and comprehensive of a lot of the challenges we have um, in internet governance space um, for 2024 and the future. So perhaps um, let's keep this and, and, and try not to revisit the list, but thanks Xiao as well for the suggestion. Okay, so, um, all right, let's see, sorry. Yeah, uh, Samaya? Carol, for coming back again. Um, but um, regarding sustainability, uh, the peace is also a sustainability issue. And uh, if uh, you are living peace without the uh, prefix of sustainability, um, it should come with sustainability in peace and development, uh, because there is also a peace and there is also a sustainable peace and unsustainable peace also. So if you want to indulge in that kind of discussion, uh, sky is the limit. Uh, so if uh, people want to go with peace in this uh, title, sustainable peace and development can be a good compromise. Thank you. Yes. Alhaji. This is Alhaji, Mark member. Yes, I tend to concur with the with the last speaker uh, because just like the question Abdurrahman asked earlier about the sustainability, are we talking about the the digital assets we are talking about, or are we all talking about um, you know the the internet itself? But I think with this compromise like um, uh, sustainability, um, how can we do that? Um, uh, you know, using um, with peace. And because these are two fundamental things. Um, it's, it's about um, um, peace and to be able to sustain that. So I think um, um, uh, sustainability of peace and development, I think that one should be, should be quite okay as a compromise. Uh, 
Oh, sorry, Sabah, then Jordan. Thank you, Shaheen. 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 Thank you
close the list as it is, um, not make any references to this topic yet because it's still at the very beginning. And, but that doesn't stop us from, let's say, perhaps suggest that the leadership panel hosts a session in that sense, or hosts even as part of a framing of a main session or anything that will close off the IGF 2024, anything in that sense. So just, just to add a plus one in the comments. So Abdul Hamtel again, uh, uh, speaking from my capacity as a MAG member, um, I, I do agree with with Elise and this, uh, that the idea of sustainable development, digital sustainable development, is still premature. But this digital sustainability as a framework is is, is something that's important. Uh, back to that to the, to the word peace uh, itself specifically, um, I think it's it's very proud. It, it might include everything, and that we always think about. So what's thinking about what does that mean in terms of of internet governance and what does that mean in uh in our digital world i would say and uh, just a thought that came to my mind we always talk about cyber security we always talk about cyber defensing but it might be a good opportunity to introduce a cyber peace uh, and, and 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 promoting that that the ultimate goal of cybersecurity, ultimate goal of protection, is to create that peace on that perspective. So, I'm wondering if 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 there is uh, it's a good idea or not so to to add uh, cyber to, to the peace, uh, and, and I'll keep it to the floor for, for my colleagues in that. Yeah, I mean. I may not be pronouncing your name properly, sorry. Go ahead. Morris Carol, it's uh, Samanet. Uh, Samanet Ajalizadeh from the technical community. Um, I would like to go back to the initial reason why we reopened number two, which was to make it consistent with uh, the other three, as in including an action word. Um, I'm very much uh, pro what was uh, the three words that were on the screen, uh, peace, development and sustainability, and suggest to add enhancing the digital contribution to, to, um, to make it consistent with the other, tr basically, three things. Thank you. Okay, so let me just think on how I'm gonna phrase um, questions for the floor. Okay, so first, um, first thing on the floor, include enhancing in topic number two, that's on the floor. Okay, <laughs> let's see a show of hands to include enhancing or your plus ones online. I need to see you online. On the floor is including enhancing. Raise hands or plus one in the in the chat. Okay, so we're including enhancing. <clears throat> the next thing on the floor is to well, to include cyber in number two. So the next thing on the floor is to include cyber in. Yeah. Okay, so let's see on, please don't say no cyber, just say minus one or <laughs> Plus one, please. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, it's it's we can't determine, so I'm going to put it to the floor again. 
Oh, sorry, hold on a sec. Rosalind, since you're British, <laughs> enhancing the digital contribution to cyber peace, comma, development and sustainability, does the cyber affect everybody else? Okay, so <laughs> just, uh, just. I'll start over. Cyber is not applied to um, development and sustainability. So it's cyber dash. So like you have cyber peace, cyber security, cyber attacks. So it's cyber peace was what was meant as one word. Okay, so let's hear from Wyman. Wyman Kwok, UN Desa. So again, more of a point of information uh, from on behalf of the UN Secretariat. As some of you may know, the ongoing discussion in lead up to the summit of the future, during which uh, a pact uh, of the future will be adopted. Other than the global digital compact, there's also the peace agenda. Uh, so I personally, in that context, I think adding the context of cyber peace uh, will be better frame the discussion that is relevant to IGF rather than overall peace. Thank you. Just the disclaimer that the decision is to the man, but I'm just providing that from a point of uh, information. Right. So just for clarification, we needed to see how cyber was applied um, because there was a misinterpretation. So um, what was meant to be put here is cyber peace instead of peace only. And Wyman just um, gave us additional information where we should clarify peace and put cyber peace. So on the floor is whether um, to include cyber peace. On the floor and on, on online, please put your pluses and no pluses to include cyber peace. And this one's got a burning question. You have a burning question. Okay, give us a minute. Go ahead, Alyssa. I'm 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 a bit of um I've actually got a question for for Wai Min, um because there is also um the ongoing cyber crime treaty, and I understand cyber crime is different than cyber peace, um but there. There have been lengthy dis debates in New York about this, and I'm a little bit hesitant, therefore, to add in cyber peace um, in this title, to add in cyber with peace in this title, um, because it, it's been a it's been a, a very difficult debate amongst member states on this topic. So um, maybe a little bit of clarification. Pardon? Maybe that's why I just added things. Okay. Yeah. I think Wyman's point is the same thing as we had with, with um, human rights. We want to make sure that we're talking about peace in terms of cyber peace, as opposed to um, just like how we clarified human rights. Uh, you have brought up the point that it's a, a hot topic and no, and it's a big debate. Well, let's bring the debate to, to um, IGF if it's a debate. We're not deciding what it is, but 
if we say that the IGF is where we discuss, then maybe let's bring it to, to the IGF to discuss. Um, we have Jordan, then um, Bruna. Okay, then, then we have two observers, hold on. <laughs> okay, uh, and Otis. Uh, thank you, Carol, Jordan Carter, MAG member, technical community. Um, uh, I'm just kind of mindful of the international delicateness of so-called cyber questions. And I think if, the, if what we're looking for here is an orienting towards technical and digital matters around peace, then it's covered in the way that the thing is worded anyway, because it's about enhancing the digital contribution to these things. So it is internet, it is cyber, it is digital, but it does leaving the word cyber out achieves two things. It avoids, you know, I'm gonna say that I'm not familiar enough with UN diplomacy and international sensitivities to know whether it's a wise thing for us to put it there. Uh, and I think it does um, have a, a sort of a narrowing of scope, which might be intentional, might not compared with the wording without cyber. To me, it feels like the, the digital contribution to those three terms orients us adequately without being too prescriptive or buying fights that we might be accidentally buying into. So I think my preference would be um, to not cyber. Bruna, Bruna and then Samane. Thanks, Carol. No, just to highlight that um, to me, peace would work better here because um, it holds some connections with the summit of the future and a lot of the discussions we might have um, later in September. And also because um, at least, I mean, my perspective here is it's a little bit of people that from people that work in freedom of expression, disinformation regulation and so on. And the cyber peace kind of framework might hint that we want to discuss um, external influence from certain countries in elections or things like that, or even like coordinated operations to influence democracies and things um, in different political systems and so on. So it, it, I know it's not exactly, it's not all that the cyber peace concept um, speaks to, but it's one part of that. And um, given that um, this is also a very sensitive year with a lot of conflicts happening, including in the region where the IGF is gonna be hosted, I would prefer to keep peace as a general and umbrella concept and also as part of the UN language and part of the mission from a lot of the UN institutions as well. So that's all. Bruna, um, Samane, then Rosalind. Um, thank you, uh, Carol. Um, Defending, removing cy uh, cyber from the word peace, um, I have two arguments for that. One is that from technical perspective, cyber peace has a very distinctive meaning and it does not necessarily only, so the word cyber doesn't make it peace in the cyberspace. It just um, specify a context where cyber crime, uh, actually the opposite word, um, becomes meaningful. Um, so uh, without knowing that context from technical perspective, and I'm from a security background, I would not add it here. Second is that if we add it here, we would lose consistency with the generality of the other words in this topic, which is development is also a bit more generic and sustain sustainability is also generic and peace, so is peace. But if we add cyber, then we lose consistency in the formatting with the other two words, which I do not recommend. Thank you. Samaya? And then Samaya. Thank you, um, Chair. And just to say, I'm just responding as I was asked uh, directly by name to come in uh, by Changatai, hence I am coming in as an observer, also noting that several observers have spoken today, given that much of the first Open Consultations Day was used for MAG members specific dialogues. 
Um, I was asked to come in on a language perspective and on a technical point, I would say here, there would be two separate words, but as other observers have made their points and input as well, I would also um, like to suggest that um, really to go back to what we've covered um, the past two days, the MAG has done some really excellent work to focus the IGF's agenda. And um, I'm conscious that looking at the feedback, a lot of um, the feedback this year was about focusing the agenda. And I think the MAG has done an excellent job of doing that this week. Um, so just to really um, agree that this, uh, this is an important focus. And in order to cultivate a focused agenda, we um, could lose consistency um, if, if, as it's going here, um, enhancing the digital contribution to cyber peace development and sustainability, it just loses a little bit of that focus that I think the MAG has retained so well this week. Um, a clear focus on the sustainable development goals would comprehensively cover cyber and other topics without privileging one. Um, so those are some reflections. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Carol. Uh, just a brief uh, short comment on cyber peace. There is no agreed definition of cyber peace. Um, mostly it, it is a term used for four things, cyber crime, cyber terrorism, cyber uh, espionage, and cyber war also in terms of armed conflict. So it's a broad word and it covers so many dimensions and aspects. Uh, just a short comment on this. Thank you. Okay, so Otis. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to comment on the phrasing, if enhancing digital contribution to cyber peace might not be redundant. And also, um, second thought, um, I think digital contribution to peace and cyber peace might be two different thoughts. Where one is digital contribution to overall peace, and yeah, there might be peace in the cyberspace. Um, so, the Anthony Mag member, Christine Manning, Mag member again. Uh, thank you for, for all the provoking uh, thoughts. Uh, what I'm more convinced now is the importance of, regardless of we put it in the title or description, or even we don't put it all, but I think this is. From strategic point of view, it is it is a time probably to move from all the, I, I would say that negative word associated with the cyber to more of a value generated from the cyber. So what we are generating from cyber security is, is a piece. What we are generating from from um, fighting the cyber crime is is ex exactly the opposite, which is which is cyber peace. Uh, and I think this is might be uh, an area that uh, we can add uh, if it's not in the title in the description, because I think there is there need to be a discussions and 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 thinking process. Again, we are in very early stage of introducing this term, but I think it will be it will be great if we if we can see some proposals coming with the provoke thinking about how we can shift and um, not go with, with 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 the negative or the scary things about cyber to more of the value that we generate from the cyber. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much. Okay, um, I'm just gonna make a comment then Alyssa and then what's the first name? You have your hand over the first name. Sorry. Okay. I just wanted to, to make a, a general comment. Um, I've heard things like cyber um, peace is not being defined. I've heard that um, it's still up in the air here, there, and everywhere. Does that mean that the IGF does not contribute to defining things or discussion, discussing the, the, the definition of things? Uh, I, I want us to be wary of making those type of, of statements. I'm not saying 
we're putting cyberspace in or whatever. But in general, I think we we need not to shy away from new topics, things that aren't defined. We're the IGF. We need to help define. So let's not let's not put our minds in that mindset that oh we're not clear, oh it's not defined. No. IGF, you want to look for some definitions or possible definitions. You want to talk about how we're going to define it. We'll come to the IGF. Let's talk about it. So that's just my comment with regards to where we were heading with, with, with that, um, with, the, with the conversation. So Alyssa, uh, Philip, Chris, then we're going to close and, and put a question to the floor. Chair, oh, sorry. Um, this is Elisa Hiva for the record. Um, I just wanted to come back to my previous comment in which I asked why, because Wyman was very positive actually about adding cyber. Um, I have my doubts. I still have my doubts and I would really be interested to hear from Wyman um, about the cyber crime uh, uh, treaty. Um, and um, I understand what you said, Carol, about the IGF being a place where we can discuss new um, um, uh, new definitions. But this, on at least cybercrime, has been up for debate for quite some time. And as I said in an earlier stage, people can hand in um, workshop proposals, but I don't think we should be provoking in uh, subtitles or sub-themes um, on these kind of issues that are, are very delicately handled with at the moment. Um, I don't think that's um, the right time in this stage of the, um, the discussions, how they are at the moment in the, in the UN. Wyman? Uh, Alisa, my have not responded earlier because I thought the following discussion, including the Mac chair, did, did elaborate that context. So first of all, I think if if I miscommunicated, I the I'm obviously I'm not Mac member. I'm not suggesting that the cyber must be there. I just like to give the context which Mac chair did explain, which is the same uh, the same logic of looking at human rights versus everything human rights and versus digital human rights, which we have the. The agreement of the MAC earlier. So it's in the same context. So since I have the floor, I also like to explain that in UN, uh, we always say that the general three pillars of work uh, are peace, developments, and human rights. So IGF has actually uh, uh, emerged from more development, and we know that human rights is always there, and right now also into peace. Uh, I believe um, that it's important to qualify whether it's, again, not bad about adding the cyber next to the peace, but what is the peace discussion in IGF is about? Uh, so if it's not in the title, I guess that can be in the narrative, but I think that context is important. And uh, our, our uh, colleague uh, also explained that cyber peace, given if it's brought, uh, it can also cover different areas. It's not just about cyber crime. There's, uh, of course, again, cyber war, uh, cyber espionage, and maybe a ton of other things about, about uh, keeping peace. And I, I, I just like to say that I fully support what uh, Mac Chair mentioned about that IGF sh uh, should not shy away from looking into new domain. And I think IGF has been very successful, uh, like first to discuss about misinformation, disinformation when it became such an important topic uh, globally. So I, again, first of all, is that whether or not how the title goes, that will be the decision of the Mac but it's important to qualify what is the peace dis discussion dialogue in the IGF. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so this... Philip and then Chris. Good morning. Uh, this is Philip uh, speaking for Germany, former host country. And as this is the first time I take the floor, I really would like to thank our, our host here for this um, 
amazing MAC meeting and the great hospitality. I'm really looking forward to being here in December and attending the IGF with my ministry in uh, Germany. Um, reflecting on the comments and on the discussions I just observed, um, I would like to join um, my pre uh, the previous uh, my previous uh, colleagues, uh, especially the UK and Netherlands, and but also the, my and distinguished colleagues from Pakistan, um, who uh, said that um, we don't have yet a really good or a clear definition for cyber speed, peace. And as uh, Germany is really engaged in the cyber negotiations in New York, open-ended working group, con, uh, um, cyber crime convention and all this, um, I really uh, would, um, we really would like to um, bring to the attention to the mark that we uh, should not uh, duplicate discussions we already have in New York, since they are not um, Maybe and um, not discussions we want to have here at, at the IV or not in the same form at the IGF. And uh, further, I would like to bring to the attention that we have already in the first topic, we have the term risks, which uh, includes already uh, some aspects we might uh, also uh, could cover with cyber space, cyber space. So disinformation, cyber crime that could also be covered under the first topic when we cover uh, when we tackle the risk in digital space that are my short comments here thanks okay we'll um, go to chris i acknowledge um, bruna's hands but we are very short on time and i had already said that chris would be the last sorry bruna we really need to put something on the floor. We're extremely behind time. Uh, well, I'll, I'll be very brief. Um, please, really just please. to say, I, I think, yeah, uh, Wyman's point I think is a good one, but I think actually the context is there in the first part of that um, statement, in enhancing the digital contribution. So we've, we've placed our constraints there already. And I think that also um, is also framing it in a very positive way. I think, Abdul Rahman, your comments um, in, in that regard were very well taken. I think this is this is something where we can very usefully speak about the positive contribution that digital can make. And then we can sort of talk about it in, in a variety of contexts. It doesn't have its peace in general, its development in general, its sustainability in general. Um, and we're, we're really allowing some latitude here for people with their proposals while placing the constraint of this is we're talking about the digital contribution we're not looking to open other discussions that are going on in in regard to peace development sustainability outside the igf's mandate thanks okay so on the floor is How do I raise this? Peace only. I'm trying to figure out how to raise it. Uh, yeah. So on the floor for <clears throat> raise hand or plus one, the word peace only remains. Show of hand, peace only remains. Okay, so the word peace remains as is. Okay, so um, I think the last thing was... Yeah. Okay, so, so far it reads, enhancing the digital contribution to peace. Uh, we then had the conversation on the word development. On the floor is add development to number two. Yes or no, add development to number two. Okay, it, um, adding development is a yes. So it now reads, Harness, no, oh, sorry, enhancing the digital contribution to peace, development, and sustainability. 
You saying yes? Oh, you wanted to have a discussion on development? <laughs> okay, so um, that is the conclusion on on two, because those were the words that were added and needed discussions. So it's number two is now enhancing the digital contribution to peace, development, and sustainability. Um, I will reiterate, you have a chance to shape the narrative under each um, heading. So we are only 10 minutes out from lunch and we still have one more um, decision uh, section underneath this um, session. Overall program structure and flow uh, shaping the IGF 2024 annual program, event format and flow, type and number of sessions, how to approach types of sessions and desired total number of sessions, type and number of program tracks, other program components. So we're open for a brief discussion on the last um, topic within this segment, overall program structure and flow. Mm. <clears throat> Um, so just a just question for um, Secretary uh, about did we have any survey of customer satisfaction for the speakers as well as for attendance on the quality of the proposals that was was produced in that one? Uh, is that any type of data that we can we can see how much the quality was and more earlier that we can have? Elaborate more. My question is, is about <clears throat> did the secretary of, of uh, IGF uh, did any survey uh, of the of the audience of the attendance of the conference or uh, the speakers uh, about about the quality of the sessions? So usually, when you go to some conferences, we all really receive uh, notification about how the, the quality of the conference or the quality of the, of the subject. So, is that any data that we can we can see how good we are? Terms of the offering uh, from the, the the quality because this is this is will be uh, lead my questions about about how we are good at the process that we are in is how does the process generate the quality that requires this was a uh, thank you very much for this question so there hasn't been a, a survey per se but the taking stock and from the taking stock we can say that. Um, there were some some respondents saying that few um, sessions were very little uh, with very little attendance. Thus, um, the need to to also have a more focused agenda, to have less session types, to start the sessions a little bit later in the day and ending them earlier. This is more or less the the big um, um, feedback received, let's say, from from last year. But a survey per se, no. And also, perhaps if I may add another thing there, uh, in addition to to that. Um, there have been a few respondents mentioning that uh, there have been a lot of speakers uh, attending repeatedly the, the session. So um, that was also one of the comments. Thank you. I've had um, basically the same feedback. Um, there's too many sessions. Um, sessions should start, you know, late later on and and close earlier. But then when you get down to it, if you start removing things, then people will say, well, then I don't see my um, topic there, so I won't go, so that will reduce attendance. We need so many sessions, but then if you want to start later, that means fewer sessions. When it comes to grading the workshops, there's, you know, like last year, we had 800 um, proposals. So is it really worth people wasting their time for 800 proposals and we're only going to have 200 um, sessions? 
So it's a give and take. I mean, we do want something, but we can't have both. Um, and that's always the um, conundrum that we're always facing, basically. And there's another one that um, there's too many um, panelists. You know, there was too many panelists, but each each panel should be representative. How do you do that? And um, that, that's why I'm saying that the workshop evaluation has got a big task ahead of them because they're the ones that actually recommend all this stuff. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Selena's put uh, some information on the um, screen. So we've already made a decision on open forums, town halls, and um, launches and awards. So lightning talks. Floor is open to discussion on lightning talks, and let's keep it brief. Go ahead, Chris. Thanks, Carl. Chris Buckridge for the record. Um, just reiterate what I said yesterday. I think uh, lightning talks are an important part of the program. Um, I think we should encourage uh, people to put them forward and we should make sure that they are um, housed physically on site in, in a way that um, doesn't sort of shuttle them too much off to the side so that people can actually find them and be aware of them. Um, and maybe we can even do some um, or encourage the lightning talkers themselves to do some promotion um, to get get some audience there. Uh, I do think it would be good to have the MAG have some insight into that process, but I'm not necessarily suggesting the MAG needs to be the one um, uh, doing the selection process. I think the Secretariat has done well with that in the past and happy to have them continue that, but maybe bring that slate, including all of the pro proposals um, to the MAG with with a, with a suggested way forward. Um, so if the MAG has any sort of final inputs, um, we can we can make them. I think that would be useful. Rona? Thank you very much for allowing me to take the floor. Um, just about the general points, um, Abdurrahman, as answering your question, there was once an assessment conducted by the BPF Gender and Access on the gender balance and participation of female and non-binary um, participants, panelists, speakers throughout the IGF. I, I know it's not exactly what you're asking, but it might be a good point of analysis that might be also useful for everyone that's looking or either coming into the MAG or starting to look at these topics. Um, Amrita also reminded me about the gender scorecard as well. That was another really relevant resource we've discussed um, in previous years and, and so on. So these are two of the, the kind of resources I wanted to highlight in that sense. But also um, what I, I guess, another of a, a general kind of comment on that, I'm really missing everyone, um, us having a proper conversation about the hybrid component of those panels and so on. I know this is a focused discussion on the models and et cetera, but um, we need to be to discuss, to do a deep dive on what hybrid is gonna look this year because a lot of these debates on whether rooms were empty or whether panelists were the same from other spaces, is it's, it's also depending on the rules we set. Like when we set up a rule of two panelists on site and the moderator on site, a lot of people canceled their trips to Japan, and that might have been the case that we have repeated speakers in that sense. So just adding that it's very important for us to also be discussing the hybrid components of the panels itself. And um, last but not least, supportive of Trace's comments on using the booth or the IGF village for perhaps um, some of those models. We had that in Ethiopia, um, the lightning talk area was very close to the to the village, or at least one part of that. So that was also kind of interesting because folks could watch the talks and then walk around the village for a little bit. So that's all. Uh, thanks, Bruno. But that, that discussion comes later when the work group on um, processes um, present. So 
there's a space for it. Um, there's a comment. So we're already talking about um, lightning talks. So on the floor now, do we keep lightning talks? No, sorry. We keep lightning talks as is. Maybe I should not add as is because there's room to, to improve what's happening. So on the floor, it, we keep lightning talks. That's on the floor. Yes or no? I'm not seeing any activity in the room. Keep lightning talks, yes, no. Abstaining. On the floor, I need to see a show of hands in the room because I'm seeing it online. Keeping lightning talks. Okay, so lightning talks are yes. Um. <clears throat> Networking sessions, sorry, uh -huh. sure. Uh, thank you, this is Elisa Heaver for the record. Um, how many proposals for lightning talks have been handed in last year and how many have at, at, in the end been allotted? Um, because that's part of the thing that Mag would like to have inside in that process, I think. Um, um, and um, I'm in favor of of continuing lightning talks, but I I I don't really think they need to be um, as many as there were. I think in Japan, because I, I I've I've seen um, the room sometimes like almost empty there. So yeah, thanks. Okay, that that's part that's in bullet um, three coming down to the numbers because we haven't. So if you look at the list, we haven't spoken about numbers for any of the ones on the on the list. We're just saying keep or not keep, and then we still have now to discuss what's the numbers. Celine, just to respond to um, Alisa's comments. So last year. Um, most of the lightning talks that we received have been allocated. Uh, the reason is that we had a specific ded a dedicated space and the lightning talks are usually uh, 20 minutes long or 30 minutes long. So it was really easy to have them back to back with a 10 minutes break in between for the um, person to, to prepare their, their session. Um, I can look back at the schedule and let you know exactly how many uh, lightning talks took place at the end and how many were submitted, yes. Uh, can you just remind me, they were not broadcast as well, right? And uh, this is another thing that can be discussed uh, now, they were not broadcasted. Yeah, so they didn't take up resources from other sessions because they weren't broadcast. We had an extra room so people could just, you know, and we used that room. So. Okay, uh, sorry, networking the se um, networking sessions. Keep networking sessions. Show fans to keep networking sessions or online, do a plus one. On the floor, networking sessions. We will come back to numbers for each one of these, okay? And it's only mag persons um, giving input. Let me determine. Can I see inside the room again, please? Okay, so we're keeping network sessions. Remember, we're not discussing the amounts yet. Um, <clears throat> So this decision was already made, I think, that the DCs and the NRIs will um, try to come up with some kind of collaboration with, amongst themselves. So I think that was agreed upon already. Um, 
Celine. You repeat, sorry. Mm -hmm. Right, I don't think we need a discussion on um, NRIs and DCs. No, no discussion per se. It was just to reiterate that uh, okay. DCs and NRIs are uh, very willing We're to gonna, collaborate okay, with good. the Meg. All right, thank you. Um, Pre-events, day zero events, um, open for brief discussion. No discussion, take it straight to the floor. Chris? Um, sorry, thank you, Carol. It, it might be useful just to get a sort of sense from the Secretariat as to the process of day zero events um, in past years and yeah, so we're aware. Um, so day zero events don't officially fall into um, the main meeting. Um, originally, day zero started because um, when we had the venue, there was a day when everything was set up and um, it was basically the testing day. And since we had everything and everything was more or less working co correctly, we decided to use that for uh, meetings that do not really fall into the official IGF uh, meeting. So these are things like the GigaNet and other things that may not, um, I mean, they are on internet governance, but do not fully comply with the um, requirements of um, the main meeting. And also they're not really um, reported in the um, proceedings uh, report. So we do have, uh, we, 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 we do open the form and these can be, you know, for some regional meetings, these, as I said, these can be for the academic meetings. It also, uh, some of it is also used by the host country um, for their meetings. And also some high level events are also used in that, um, during that day. And we also do state that um, everything working perfectly is not, is less guaranteed than it is in the usual days. So we look at them and then we allocate um, the rooms based on need and based on um, the interest as well. I don't know if somebody from the Secretariat wants to add. Mm. Perhaps something worth uh, mentioning. So um, until now, all day zero events that were submitted, so the proposals have been able to um, um, be scheduled, um, except for the IGF 2023 compared to Addis Abeba, for example. Um, there were a few sessions that could not um, take place just because the day zero was full. Um, this is just for the max consideration. Can I quickly respond? Sorry, Carol, do you mind if I respond? She said yes, yes, please okay, respond. Sorry, I yes. couldn't hear anything. Um, <laughs> Okay. Um, thank you for that, Chengitai, and thanks, Celine, for the the other clarification. I think that's that's very useful to know. Um, I, I actually don't have any um, real problem with how that's been done and with continuing to do it in that way. Um, I do think it would be useful to do to try and lock it in relatively early so that the mag has some idea what the day zero schedule looks like in being able to plan the rest of the week's events because we we sort of it's useful to be able to make sure that there's not too much duplication or that um things are covered in that in that way the other point was just to say maybe it when we talked yesterday about open forums i think adam peak brought in the the sort of example of some open forums being used for uh organizations to report report in on work that they've been doing or activities in their space and maybe that would also be something that could usefully um, go on to day zero, because um, I don't think we need to be including that in, say, the the messages or the the report on the IGF itself. That's that's more a sort of benefit uh, um, for attendees uh, at the IGF.
Okay, thank you, Chris. So I just want to give a reminder that we're now in the lunchtime hour. So we're cutting off at Octavia. So we're going to have Bruna, Zhao, and Octavia. And then we're going to cut. Thank you. Um, just about day zero, um, one small reminder. Day zero, um, Chengat, I wrote it to you in the chat. Is also the day where the classic um, Internet Governance Caucus Civil Society host um, event is hosted at the IGF. It, it's it's one of the core um, civil society gatherings where preparing for the the agenda and also kind of a lookout at the event itself, where we use it normally use it to strategize around the next coming days and or even discuss any of the pressing issues that's um, that's going to be relevant for the incoming IGF. So. Day zero is historically a really relevant day, mostly for, I mean, not just academia, but also civil society stakeholders as we use that to organize ourselves and, and it's um in that sense. I'm just I just wanted to reply to Chris' um suggestion of bringing open forums to day zero. I I mean, obviously we don't know whether this is I mean, we don't know how the, the number of submissions is gonna be for for this year, I assume, I and I hope it's as high as last year, but I, I would just be wary of occupying day zero with open forums because as Celine highlighted, is already a busy enough day. So I, I perhaps like if we put them all together in the same day, then we might lose some core and relevant space for stakeholders such as academia and civil society just because of open forums. So. Maybe there is a way of, let's say, hosting op open forums in kind of um, pre-established um, slots. So let's say the slot after lunch or the slot after the end of the day, something that's more or less fixed and folks can still know it's an, an open forum slot. But I would be a little bit wary of using day zero for that because um, we have a lot more other types of sessions that often occupy that day. That's all. Yeah, thanks, Bruna. I, I totally agree with you as well, because if we start bleeding the official side of the program into day zero, then the, the other side, which is, as you've pointed out, quite useful to stakeholder groups and other participants, will have to go. And then that would be um, not good. Ja? <laughs> uh, oh, Celine? Oh, no. Sorry, um, just to make it um, uh, clear, there were no open forums or whatsoever uh, scheduled on day zero. Yeah, and I think the that. proposal, yeah, yeah, and I think the proposal of uh, Chris to have the secretariat um, handing over the day zero events in advance uh, to to the mag would be helpful to make sure that there won't be any duplications or types of open forums um, during the rest of the weeks. So. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier on, that what we're going to do is that all session types will have the same deadline. So um, we're not going to have day zero events um, later. Everything is going to be due on the same day. So we don't have any, um, uh, what's the word, shopping carting? Um, I don't know, there was a specific word that's been used. But anyway, um, lunch, so uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I just want to maybe in zero day zero we have to give some space for the new faces. They should be encouraged to engage, not to be too much duplicate. And especially some community we want to cover, like the use track or something. So leave a little bit of uh, flexibility and encourage them to be more engaged. Thank you. Octavia. Just adding to the point really quickly, uh, as a, a many time um, participant of the IGF, the day zero is extremely important because of the fantastically packed and good multi-day event that the IGF is. The first one can be where we all come together and not just civil society, but across stakeholders, the day having that I think needs to be as open and free within, of course, the, the scheduling that, that Chris mentioned as well. Um, so I would be very much against also adding any kind of official stuff into that. Thank you. Thank you. So it's now lunch. 
We will be back at 1.45, trying to gain back at least 15 minutes. And uh, we'll start with the presentation from the working group on processes. And um, please remind me, we have to figure out numbers for, for the sessions. So see you back at um, 1.45.
Thank you. I welcome to the last segment of these meetings. I will now give the floor to our chair, Carol Roach, to start the meeting. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Oh. We had a meeting already. Yeah, that was a start. Okay, right. So Abdul Rahman has a, a meeting, so he'll be joining us a bit late. So we're at the point where, well, we kind of should kind of juggle the, the schedule today. Um, things like the type of number of sessions and total sessions, um, we're going to move to our next online meeting. Uh, we're going to move straight ahead to get um, formal approval on the tracks, the programming tracks. <clears throat> Just get my chat. Where did the chat go? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to let you do that. Just a brief introduction. Yeah, just run. We're just going to run through the list. Okay. Um, Celine will put up the, the the list of tracks and just give a brief description of each track. Thank you very much. Um, so we do not have a, a list of tracks published on, on our website, but um, perhaps just to go through and to give you the overview, especially for those who are new in uh, the MAG. We've had so far the newcomers track. This is something that is being led by Anya. Um, she's in a meeting right now, so she won't be able to, to formally introduce it. But this is an initiative that was introduced a couple of years ago where um, she uh, organizes um, session dedicated to newcomers to the IGF, so first time participants and attendees, and where she presents the, the IGF. It's been very useful, uh, again, for those attending the IGF for the first time, or perhaps just wanting to introduce it to uh, to the delegation or, or whatsoever. So the newcomers track is the first one. Then we have the high level track, which is being organized by Eleonora um, within the, the IGF secretariat. Um, the third track is the parliamentary track. This is something within the IGF secretariat. Um, it would fall under my responsibility. Um, just for you to know, the annual IGF, um, so the parliamentary track at the annual IGF is also co-organized every year with um, uh, inter-parliamentary union. And uh, sometimes, hopefully also this year, with the uh, parliament of the host country. Um, we then have uh, some new, and, and of course, uh, apologies, the, the youth track, which is also led by um, Anya in the IGF Secretariat. And as you may have heard, uh, we've had some, some discussions and also there was positive feedback uh, received from uh, participants last year, um, the judiciary track um and also the business track business track has already a little bit uh, been been discussed especially um with our icc representatives who did the survey last year at the igf 2023 in kyoto and um the judiciary track was also an initiative that uh, we were very keen on launching uh, with one of the judges from the High Court of Tanzania who participated, um, thank you, who participated in last year's IGF uh, in order to provide more, let's say, capacity building workshops and whatsoever, a program for judges uh, working uh, in the digital arena. So that would be it. Um, if you have questions, please let me know. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. 
onto <clears throat> the presentation by um, work group on processes. And Lito, peace. Are you on? I know she was having oh, some Lito. difficulties. Lito can do it. See, peace is back there. Peace, peace will take the first part. So she's asking for, for the mic. She is on. She's on. She's asking for the microphone. Thank you very much, Lito. Yes, I have the mic now. Okay, thank you, Chair and everyone who is in for this meeting. Uh, first of all, I cannot, uh, okay, my name first, my name is Peace Oliver Muge and I'm a MAG member from civil society. And uh, I am a co-facilitator of this working group together with Lito. I wanted to first uh, say, express my appreciation for our theme. I think it's really a great theme. We wanted to have the word multi-stakeholder and we have it. I think it's it's uh, something that uh, we did that we should be happy about. So straight away, I will go on to share with you this uh, workshop pro pro proposal form that we have been working on uh, together with the, uh, the members of the working group. We have had a couple of feedback and some we already agreed. And there are some that we would like to bring to your attention uh, as we do this presentation. And before I do that, maybe I should just let you know about the timelines that we have in regards to this. Uh, the call for proposals should go out by 15th of March and then uh, running until 30th of April. And then evaluations will happen between 7th to 23rd of June. Okay. So yes, we do not, there are not so many changes, I should say. So it starts off from what you have. We can scroll through, uh, Celine. Okay, yes, I think you're giving the link to the chat for everyone else who wants to follow. Yes. So in this first part, we still emphasize the two things that we, we've been emphasizing, which is the, the, the importance of diversity, that the MAG things, uh, the organizers of sessions should, should be aware of. We also discuss the importance of hybrid uh, in the next uh, statement. I will not read it, so then we can, we can proceed. Yes. So we emphasize these two things. However, we've had uh, some comments and discussions uh, coming from the community and from the members of the working group on the issue of uh, having online only sessions. So that's that's one thing that I wanted to wanted to bring to your attention. And also uh, in regards to that, we have always had this requirement to have at least a moderator uh, on site and two speakers on site for a session to, to be selected. Uh, as you were all aware that the last two years, we tried uh, very much to make sure that we have a, a balance of hybrid, not only having sessions uh, that, that have all speakers online and no speakers on site. We had uh, some of these issues in, in, in Addis. So uh, this uh, then we have some comments in regards to the online only and how do we do that uh, with the conversations that have been uh, going on around uh, the timing and how the possibility of probably some people not making it uh, in regard. So this is something that we can discuss uh, later on. Uh, we can move on, please. Yes, and then this information, you know, uh, the same. We we can go on. We we have not made much changes, uh, if I remember well. Yes, we can go on. Uh, yes. 
Okay, and then here uh, there was a suggestion to to add to add this uh, information, you know, just to guide uh, the session organizers who are proposing to know why we need their regional group. Uh, but yes, we can we can go on. There was there's also a point around when we we've been talking about uh, making sure that each session represents different. Uh, uh groups and regional diversity and so yes uh i don't know how that will come in but let's go on yes celine we can go on we still have the the word count which i think was very helpful last year during the evaluations at least we had few words that were helpful so it helped the mug during the evaluation processes and then we have the policy questions we can go on and uh, yeah, the sample policy questions, maybe for new MAG members, I don't know if I need to say more, but yeah, I think it's, yeah, usually we have the sample, the policy questions and a sample to guide people. But what is also nice about this year, last year we didn't use the manual, this year we we reviewed the manual that uh, Lito is going to present. So this manual will be helpful to give more details for the for uh, the session organizers. Yes, we can go on, Celine. And then we have the expected outcomes. Yes, we can go on. Yeah, and then we, with the changes that we discussed today in reference to session uh, four, format, session types, you know, there will be ch changes on this. Um, there were also questions. There were also some questions. I think on we've lost her. Did you lose me? Yeah, so no. you could, I think it's best if you just leave your video off. Yeah. Okay, just done that. Okay. Sorry about that, my connection. Okay, yes, I was saying that uh, the session format and the session types will change in reference to our discussions that we, we've we had uh, today, at least we agreed on some changes and there were some questions on that that we wanted to bring to the mug. So this should uh, now work well since we have these uh, changes on this. Yes, we can go on. Yes, so then we still have, you know, these same questions around online uh, sessions only, or the question that I would also want to put forward is that how do we ensure that uh, we still maintain hybrid, uh, but maybe we will need to, to have a few changes in regards to that. Previously, we said at least a speaker, uh, at least a moderator on site and two speakers on site. So the question that we have around here is still in regards to that. Uh, we can go on, please. Yes, and then we have the training that we will that we 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 will offer to the organizers to build their capacity to ensure that we have sessions that are engaging. You know, we've been over still having a lot of questions on how our how our sessions are not, sometimes sessions are ending when the, the participants have not been engaged, only the speakers have spoken. So I think these are some of the things that also we need to add on to our list of things when we speak to the session organizers. Then in relation to SD, SDGs, uh, and then we have the organizers information. I am not really reading this into detail since we have another document to, to, to present. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so then again, it comes uh, to, to, to speakers. You know, there's been, we've had questions about it's, it's, it's way early in the year for people to be aware, to, to confirm their participation on site. So they requested that you know maybe we need to 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 think about uh, uh, adjusting that. Are we still going to stick to that to ensure that for a session for for Mark to 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 consider a session proposal, it should have you know three speakers already confirming the attendance on site. 
Yeah, so this is really about the, the speakers, making sure that the speakers, the, the organizer has the speakers registered on the web. They have a profile already on the website. Uh, this is something that we've had uh, in the previous years as well. Yeah, so this is uh, about that. Yes, so it still talks about uh, the two speakers and moderator. Yeah, this is still moderator information. Yes, we can go on, please. Berlin, yes, we can go on, please. Yes, rapporteur, documentation. Yes, Celine, we can go on. Yes, and uh, yeah, if 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 the proposers or organizers have some questions for us, you know, so this is really how uh, what we have. And uh, just to to say it again. Uh, some of the discussions that came up and uh, was about the online only and hybrid. And my question to you is how do we ensure that we strengthen this and ensure that people are able to participate and still have the hybrid work very well, like just worked last year, probably better, of course, better. So that's that's it for me. I will, I will be open for questions. Or Chair, would you like... Um, Little to, to present the next document before we take questions. Uh, no, so we let let's complete on um your your document. There were so what I'd want you to do is to step through um each area that you need a response from the mag. Yes, PC is asking for the microphone again. Oh, yes, I have it finally. Thank you. Okay, yeah. yeah, so the, the issues are the, the one, the question that was coming from the, from the working group was about online only sessions. Would the mark consider that? And uh, something that we also want to bring to the mark is how do we ensure that the hybrid uh, uh, hybrid uh, format will work well? Previously, we said that at least for a session to be considered, it should have a moderator and two speakers, at least a, a moderator and two speakers on site. So those are the things that I want to put forward, but Lito could have, I could have probably missed anything, Lito, if there's something that, uh, that I've missed out that we want to bring to the attention of the mug, please go ahead. Thank you, Peace. Yes, you have said it right. The first issue we need to bring to the mug is uh, because there were comments about it, uh, is uh, the online only sessions. We thought not, uh, it should be hybrid. But if that is a, a fact, if we are go going to, to, to allow hybrid sessions, the, the discussions was, was about the requirements of having three persons, I mean the moderator and two speakers on site. One of the comments was to reduce that requirement maybe to the moderator and one speaker, uh, presuming that due to the dates or other facts, uh, there could be less uh, in -site, on site or physical attendance from participants. So that is the first thing we need the MAC to react on and maybe to provide guidelines to the working group as to if we need to change or leave it as it is. In our discussions, we left it 
like that because we thought it, it, it was worthy for the whole MAC to discuss this. That is the first, then we will go on to it. And maybe so, this is also similar. Chair, let me just say it. Uh, then another thing was about the number of speakers. This is also still in reference to the speaker speaking and participants not having any opportunity to ask questions or join the conversation is to limit the number of uh, speakers that we have. We're looking at having only four speakers plus the moderator to make five or six, you know, I think this would be important to to hear from the mug and those. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll put that as a second. So right up and now we're having a discussion on <clears throat> whether or not to have full hybrid sessions. And if you have a full hybrid session, um how many persons do we want to say should be on site, if any? Okay, open for discussion. Um, Bruna, Octavia, Chris. Bruna? Thank you, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, just a couple of reactions initially. I agree with some comments on, on the, as I said before, right, um, we do need to pay more attention to the hybrid component for this year, or let's say it's um, more specifically the remote component of sessions, right? Um, I'm not, I'm just not sure, piece whether like fully online sessions um, would make necessarily sense because um, there was a previous um, concern, and I think it was the Poland IGF, right, that we had fully online sessions with just the kind of the, the broadcasting component on site and some folks felt that they didn't really have a chance of interaction. So perhaps what we can do is um, if sessions end up being confirmed as like a fully for with only remote speakers and so on, we could at least push for the moderator being on site as I see the moderator role as, as kind of this bridge between online and, and in-person attendees and so on. So that would be my first um my first comment in that sense. Um, I like the diversity component and I think um, it would be very interesting for us to, to discuss what are the models of the sessions. But I also believe that, um, I mean, just, just as a recommendation, and I know we have been doing this for the, the last years, like perhaps what we need to do um, this year since we're bringing in um, lightning talks and other kinds of things into this talk would be to invest even further on capacity buildings or webinars to the community to explain what these models are and then and then really just just make sure the community follows them because I also get um August comments from before or anyone else's about community not actually following the models but I, I think I'm in between in that one but so then perhaps um we don't need all of the session models we have right now but then let's keep some diversity in that sense because there is still a lot of folks that do like breakout rooms or anything like that even in the in-person component. And, and I don't really see that it's the mag's role to kind of cut down on the options they have. I mean, we need to work with them, but not necessarily cut down on the community's ability of like setting their own sessions and so on. That's it, Carol, thanks. Um, Octavia, then Chris. And remember we're on the point of deciding on hybrid session totally hybrid session, um, sorry, totally online session or hybrid. So that's what's on the floor at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, for reiterating. I'll save my other points for later. I am Octavia, a MAG member and a new MAG member. So I hope I'm not throwing a cog in anyone's wheel. One thing that I, since the beginning of attending IGFs, have really sought after is a is a space where I, th I think we should uh, make online only and, and hybrid. I The internet governance forum needs to be as accessible as possible for everyone. If we are multi-stakeholder, open, accessible, all of these things, we have to be the leaders and the leadership that, that allows that. I understand fully um, the technical implications of that and the difficulties of that. Um, with accessibility, it is not a, I will put up a ramp for wheelchairs so my friend in a wheelchair can come. It is putting up the ramp in case someone happens to come by 
and wants to see what's going on. And so what I mean by that is uh, the the online only needs to have a stable, um, consistent, everything can and should be available to be online only and hybrid. Um, and I would even go as far and, and please colleagues chime in. I'd love to, to, to engage much further on this. I would say no, no IGF meetings can be only physical in person. It needs to always have an online uh, accessibility uh, um, access. Um, but the, the reason the reason why I'm, I, I feel so strongly about this is we as a community and as a for, for me at least a very very rare forum need to really be strong in practicing what we preach and and, and lead by by this example. Um, uh, thanks to Bruna and other colleagues that have mentioned some of the things maybe in how we do this, having someone on site, for instance, to moderate all, all of that, having technical capacity, Abdurrahman, I know, is in a meeting, but also in the Secretariat, understanding maybe ramping that up, asking for volunteers, talking to Saudi um, civil society, talking to Saudi technical... Um, Octavia, um, just, just so that we... Uh, because we're a bit cognizant of the time. Uh, that's not the question. The question is just strictly, um, should we have um, fully virtual or um, hybrid? Um, Non-hybrid is out. Uh, we're not even discussing that. Uh, we all know that at the bare minimum, we should have hybrid. And for the technical discussion, we can discuss that later. Uh, we just, this is just I, a binary I, I question. Remember, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that I can participate with my view and get to know and understand also what I need from others. Um, but I will, I will keep it here. Perhaps we can reintroduce the timer um, just to make it to make it easier for us to then get through the agenda. I'm aware of that. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Changatai. Thank you, Octavia. Chris? Yeah, thank you, Carol. Uh, I'll be very quick. Just to say, I think we should allow for all online sessions in terms of speakers. I do think we should ensure that there is an on-site moderator. Um, but I also think in that sense we can perhaps provide um, as mag uh, some options for people if there is not an on-site moderator that there are mag resource people available to step into that role i think that's not ideal but it's it's important to um, make sure that you don't end up with a room uh, with no one in control seemingly um, to ensure that there is interaction so I, I think important to have a moderator but let's do what we can to fill that gap if there is is such a gap Alga? The floor, Alga. Yes, sorry, it was taking time to unmute. Uh, I'm not supportive for the fully online sessions because I I think this is uh, quite a waste of uh, resources and we have uh, quite a lot of this uh, online meetings uh, throughout the year. So I do think that uh, the value of having uh, the annual meeting is uh, not that much even in that uh, uh, thematic uh, in exchange that we have during the sessions, but uh, a lot in networking. And this is completely absent when we have fully online sessions. If uh, if I wanted to watch the broadcast this session, I don't really need to travel and uh, uh, participate in the meeting. Plus, I think having only moderator in the room is not enough because uh, usually if this is just, uh, and that was the case in Katowice, uh, in such sessions, uh, the rooms uh, tend to be empty. And then this is uh, just uh, the very weird feeling when you have uh, uh, the moderator there uh, uh, present there in the room who is just talking to the screen and there is uh, no one else uh, who would participate in the discussion. I think Hybrid is definitely a way to go, but definitely not just putting one moderator in the room to, to run the show. Uh, yes, I just want to just to add with uh, on what Olga was saying is that we also, when we have our conferences, we also have this usage thing. So if we have the setup there, it must be used. Otherwise, it's as uh, you know, it's just a waste of money. So if we have fully online sessions 
we have to make sure that the room is not empty in some fashion. Um, that resource has to be used um, in some way. So I'm not too sure how that's going to be done, but I'll leave it up to the mag. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to put this in two parts. The first part is going to um, relate to fully online. Then the second part will ask you whether or not they should have um, the moderator and, well, two persons. Let's put it at two persons, one to two persons. So first, I'm um, going to ask the questions. Allow full online sessions. That's on the floor, yes or no. Full online sessions. <laughs> you want me to be okay, that's no. Uh, you want me to rephrase it so you could put your hands up or down? Okay, everybody's saying no. Okay, so it's hybrid. Okay, so now let's see. So we, we know we can have, um, there's no um, fully online sessions. So next question, how many people should be on site? Um, I just need to ask Lito, does it matter the composition of those persons on site? Well, it, we could decide not to select, we wanted, uh, 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 last year we wanted one moderator and two speakers mm -hmm. to ensure we have uh, some contents on site. But maybe if the mag uh, um, thinks it's better, we can have one moderator and one speaker, or then two persons, but one of them, the moderator, because being the moderator implies not only directing, uh, giving the floor, but only to know something about the topic. So people can refer to the moderator and ask uh, general questions or whatever. So that was our, our idea, our idea, excuse me, uh, to have a moderator and maybe one speaker on site. The rest of the speakers may be online if that is the case. That That's the proposal on the table. So, yeah, how many people need to be on the session? Sorry, no discussion, sorry. <laughs> so we would now, um, the question that um, workshop uh, moderate, the workshop working group needs to know, um, let me see if I could phrase this probably for yes and no. Minimum one moderator and one speaker. That's what's on the floor, yes or no? Minimum, yes, okay, good. Thank you. Other people have flights, I see. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so the next thing that the working group needs us to respond to. Lito, what's the next thing? Okay, uh, uh, after this, there's another issue that we started to discuss yesterday, but um, I'm not sure where we are at that point. So we can, can we move uh, down? Celine, please, in the form. When we talk about the sessions format, or, or maybe we can need to explain this a little bit, that, that one, go, go back up, please. The comment regarding the, the region in the world that uh, there was some comments uh, about allocating or trying to allocate the time slot uh, um, more suitable for a certain region. We are including this 
uh, the regional group, not only because we are interested in, in learning about the, the origin or the source of the proposition in terms of regional, geographical region, but also to find out if there is a, a time slot within the, 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 the whole day from 9, 9.30 to, to 6, uh, local time, that could attract uh, um, audience from the region. That is not guaranteed because, of course, the, organizator, the organizers cannot um, ensure, cannot uh, make a, a commitment uh, to, to allocate the, the, the time slot that the proponents would like to have it. But just to have an idea, we, we don't want to raise expectations far than we can make. And I am aware, or we are aware, that this is a very difficult issue logistic, logist, from the logistic point of view. So I don't know if you want to leave that or take it out. I mean, I, I refer to the comment of uh, looking for a, for a suitable time slot within the, 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 the daily schedule. What do Mag think? Do we leave it like that with the risk of creating or raising expectations or we take it out and leave it as it has been years in the past? That's one comment now. Okay, so we have Bruna, Peace, Chris. Carol, would you like to bring Peace first? I think she might want to clear up some questions and then I can come in after. Go ahead, Peace. Thank you, Chair. So my 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 hand came up when you were asking about uh, what next, what we uh, the, the, the questions that we have. Another question that we have uh, for the mug is that we are talking about the many speakers and less time is left out for the participants to join the conversation. So we need to have a limit of speakers that we can take per session. That's something that we are putting uh, across. Yes, we talk about diversity, but I think still we can put, uh, we could put that, let's say for agree on five, we say five, but at least uh, the speakers coming from four different uh, stakeholder groups, you know, or region, something like that. Because already, if from the four, the five speakers, we have a speaker from Africa, we have a speaker from Asia, we have a speaker from, you know, Europe or some. That's already, you know, there's some diversity already of that sort. And then if we have already a speaker coming from the government, coming from the civil society, you know, that's already some kind. Of diversity so we don't need to have you know six you know to, to to match with the whole number of stakeholder groups that we have or the regional groups that we have so we think that we need to have a kind of number put uh in terms of number of speakers for the sessions thank you bruna thanks carol um no just i think the chat is going through a interesting discussion on the components of the on-site components, like whether we should do one or two or something like that. I know this was the previous discussion, but there is an ongoing, um, there is not an ongoing, but a long-term kind of equity issue at the IGF as well. That is folks not being able to secure funding um, ahead of the event and we often go through a lot of the workshops with names that are half confirmed. And that is also one of the issues where we end up not having the full um, set out of a workshop being present at the IGF and, and perhaps a much different configuration than the ones we approved. So I also wanted to put this on the table for us because it's not really about responsibility and, and it's not really about people not showing up, but also an equity um, issue. And then also acknowledging that um, Riyadh is a city that's somehow expensive. Um, and and it, I mean, I know we're still ongoing on discussions about support and, and, and something like that, but it's also a global event, right? It's a, an event that caters to many different um, 
audiences and people. So we need to be aware of that. So perhaps having just one person um, on site might be an interesting compromise. As for the regional groups, um, I think it would be a nice touch to try to cater to different time zones. But I, I do have a perhaps a main challenge here um, that we could add into the form, um, like just ask, perhaps ask the, the person that's submitting if they would like for this for the, for this workshop to be adapted to their time zones, because um, we are mostly looking at global discussions, right? And and that often comes as one of the main points when we're evaluating um, those workshops. So if they, they flag it as a regional one, then we can adapt, but if not, we keep it in the global schedule, but that will be my only comment on that. Thanks. Chris? Yep. Um, thanks, Chris Buckridge, for the record. Um, I left a note in the document there around regional group. I think it's a little along the lines of what Bruno was saying. I would change it to say primary regional group um, because I think the assumption would be that speakers will come from various regions, but there may be a need for a primary regional group. And I would make either make the field optional or put a no preference option there um, so that people can make clear if they don't have a, if, if it's just a, a global um, one. I, I mean, I think we also need to include, whether it's here or somewhere else, some reference to say um, there will be some best effort made to uh, accommodate time zone preferences, but no guarantee. Thanks. Uh, just speaking from the secretariat point of view, um, I think that effort would not be great as such because um, first of all, just doing the schedule as well is a highly complex task. You have to make sure that the sessions of the different, um, of the same um, theme don't really overlap. And then if you add that additional component of time zone, whether it's in the morning or in the evening, that's also going to take it to a whole new level. And as has been said by one speaker, I'm not too sure. I mean, this is the global IGF. So whatever we are discussing should have a global effect. We do have the regional IGFs as well for regional discussions. So um, we can try, but it probably be the last element that the Secretariat will look at. Mm -hmm. Marcus, uh, Marcus, then Alga. Thank you, Karam. A small suggestions from the Dynamic Coalition Coordination Group. We would like to add an additional question to add an, a level of complexity. Uh, like relation to SDGs, we would suggest relation to other components of the IGF ecosystem, such as BPFs, PNs, or Dynamic Coalitions and just that the proposals indicate whether their proposal has any relation to some existing ongoing work within the ecosystem. Thank you for your consideration. And I just wanted to second what Chengitai was mentioning, because uh, uh, I think uh, this is uh, really complicating a lot, uh, the task of uh, uh, creating the agenda when we need to put additional layer on it and uh, try to fix uh, the time into the regional group. And still, we do not have uh, any kind of uh, guarantee that uh, even uh, the majority of people joining uh, that type of the session would be coming from the regional group uh, to which we try to adjust uh, the timing. And also overall, I'm not sure whether there is the value in keeping uh, this uh, specific um, um, part of the uh, form, this uh, regional group at all, whatever, even if we call it primary, because if we are uh, trying to achieve uh, uh, stakeholder diversity in the panels, uh, in the workshops uh, which are proposed, uh, then just uh, if people are representing different regions, how should we identify what is the primary regional group? Uh, that's why we post the questions. So what I I think uh, we get from the from the from the discussions here, we 
we are taking out the, the comment in, in color, in, in purple there in the screen. Uh, so in order not to raise expectations that we may not be able to, to accomplish. So uh, I, th I understand, I, in I interpret the, the comments. And yes, we will take, be taking out this comment. So we may go to the next question, if you, I mean, preparing to the form. The next issue in the form to be discussed is something that we started, it refers to the session's format. We started the discussion yesterday, and at least myself, I am not th that that part. I am not clear if we uh, 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 get to a conclusion. Are we going to discuss further, or are we leaving things as they are? I'm I'm referring to the format of the sessions. We have uh, like six, if I if I'm right, like six uh, types of sessions with different uh, duration times, 30, 60, maybe 75 or 90 minutes. Uh, and there are different uh, formats for the sessions. Do we want to keep all of these formats here? Uh, have, have we seen this in real practice to be a differentiator? Or we, there was a proposal in the chat yesterday to just ask for the time uh, the proponent is asking, 30, 60, 75, 90 minutes, whatever, not necessarily the, the, the type uh, differenti differentiation in, in the format or the session. So what is the mag opinion? Do we keep this? Do we, uh, this as it is, do we reduce the number of uh, formats? Uh, we will have to decide what formats do we want to keep? or do we take uh, all, all formats out and leave just the duration that the proponent is asking, uh, 30, 60, whatever minutes? That is the question for me on the floor. And again, just from the secretary point of view, uh, what would be of most interest to the secretary is actually the room type, whether it's a round table, classroom, et cetera, um, because that has re relevance on where we assign it and to, to also tell the hosts how to set up the rooms. I may, good point. So um, if that is the case, another proposal could come to the table uh, uh, stating that the different types of, of uh, accommodations for the rooms that we are able to provide. Let's say there are three or I don't know how many and the names we will be using for those. The, the, the proposal original is to avoid confusion or, or uh, to trying to facilitate for the proponents to select uh, the, the best session format for their, their purpose. One minute for a sidebar, please. <laughs>
Okay, um, I just want to put something on the table and then we go to, um, I don't know if it's, is his, is his up or just in your hand? <laughs> okay, we go to Alyssa and Jordan. So it, we want to put to the working group to simplify this, just put room layout because you already asked previously um, the time slot. So if, if the concern is mainly the room layout, then we can do round table, classroom style, theater style. And the duration where they want to. And the duration would be, since you already asked the, the duration in a different slot, would that be workable? Okay, so having said that, I have questions, I have persons with hands up. So we're gonna change that format to be um, round table, classroom, theater. In another location, we already asked the, the length of time. So go ahead, Alyssa, and then Jordan. Thank you. Um, this is Alyssa Eva for the record. Um, uh, thank you, Carol, for for the for the suggestion. I think that's already, in any case, an improvement to what we uh, what we have currently. So, uh, supportive of that. But I, I to be honest, um, to me, basically any session has felt like a panel. Um, so, I understand the wish of the secretariat to want to know what kind of layout or room layout you prefer. But in the end most sessions feel like a uh, a panel to me or have felt like a panel to me that I have attended. And no, I didn't only attend panel sessions. Um, so I, I do wonder what in the end the use would be um, and how much effect it would have on the on the session that is uh, is going to be held. Before we go to Jordan, You'd find that a lot of those smaller ones, I shouldn't say a lot. So I've I've been to um, one for SIDS and then I think one for Caribbean. And in one of them, it was a round table. So it wasn't just one table, but they had like all, like a U-shape, O-shape. And so there are, there were some sessions that um, utilize that. Not many, but if you if you visited the smaller rooms, you would have seen they were occupied like that. Okay, um, Jordan. I think the with Jordan Carter, um, technical community mag. I think the asking for what we really want to know in terms of the room layout helps, especially if there's some flexibility for the host country to not make final decisions about how to design the rooms until that information is available because then it will have perhaps a direct impact on how the venue is configured. So that could be quite useful. And personally, I think it would be quite good to get people to then explain why is this room format best suited? Because we, it would be quite nice if there were different kinds of sessions in, in the IGF. I thought that the, I thought there was a genuinely round table one in Kyoto around the WSIS plus 20 review that CSTD, I think, organized might have been someone else but you know there were lots of people who were able to intervene from the table as opposed to getting up and standing at a theater style microphone and i thought that was a much better configuration for that i'd love to see a debate about something controversial um in a session at an igf no idea if it would get through the mag so but i think the room thing is the one you know you force people to justify why they want that space because presumably there'll be fewer round table spaces it might just help Bruna? Thanks, Carol. Um, just about the session formats and so on. Um, I I like perhaps us asking the format, um, but I would feel a bit concerned with us um cementing um the style of the sessions and so on. I I I honestly disagree with um the IGF being more panels than anything else. I've been to a fair amount of roundtables, I've been to a fair amount of breakout rooms and birds of a feather. And I know that like groups such as the youth group, they do champion these kinds of formats because they want something that's far less formal and allows for more interaction. So 
I, I do believe that it's a matter of us um, actually enforcing the models that we have um, laid out um, at the beginning or at the call. So perhaps we can go with the, the suggested approach of asking the room layout. I would just not um, have classroom and theater together because they kind of sound the same. I would perhaps add a third suggestion of a, a breakout rooms um, in here because they also seem one of those interesting informal kinds of approaches to sessions, that's all. Alga, and um, Alga will be the last one on this one, please. Uh, thank you, Carol. I also tend to agree that uh, this is an interesting approach to try with uh, selecting the room layout and the duration that uh, people would prefer for their sessions. I think from the room layout, we get uh, quite a better idea of what people plan to do with uh, their sessions uh, than from uh, how they uh, tend to call their sessions. Because uh, I also get uh, an impression that very often people select uh, some like nicer formats because uh, probably this is uh, getting more chances to be selected if you don't go for something very standard. But then at the end, this is always easier to go with something standard like panel. And uh, well, uh, so I think if we just uh, go with the selection of the room layout, that uh, that would be very helpful also to get an idea of what it's going to be about. And then, uh, yeah, I also agree that there should be something for the uh, breakout uh, group uh, discussions uh, uh, for those who want to go into more interactive uh, mode. Uh, yeah. One thing for the breakout room discussions, we also have to discuss how remote people will participate in the breakout room discussions if people are breaking out. This. Okay, so um, with regards to the breakout room, um, are we then saying that if I have a breakout room, I will have a different layout, like chairs in a circle? Because we would, we would talk, we we were um, looking at changing the format to how the room is laid out. So the question is, if I do a breakout, can I then use round table or classroom? Because breakout isn't really a layout. It's something that you do, and then you have to decide how you want to seat those people in a breakout. So what I'm gonna put on the floor, because it is now minutes to three, that we change this session, session format only to reflect the layout of the room. So the question to the floor, format session will be the layout of the room. Yes or no, raise hands or put some plus in the room. Hmm? Yes, yes, raise hands, sorry. Okay, good. So that um, section there, session format, will only be the layout, physical layout of the room. Okay, thank you. Next one. Okay, thank you. And uh, we will include the, the time also somewhere else, but that's okay. Uh, Peace was reminding us that uh, we are still not having decided about the maximum amount of speakers or people, whether in the room on site or online, but uh, coordinating or direct directing the, the session. So what do we think? Five speakers in total could be the maximum in order to leave a space for comments from the audience, from interaction with, with people there. What do you think? Th five will be the maximum or four, or what number? Okay, so any questions or comments on this one? 
This is the number of speakers. Sorry, what, just before we put, if I, if is five including the moderator? Would be, yes, that would be the total number. Total five total or number. four or six, including the moderator or moderators, okay. if there are more than one. Okay. Um, and that's it. Online moderator, in person moderator is just the number. Okay, good. Okay, so we're looking, we're discussing um, the maximum number inclusive of all persons. Hi, I'm sorry for taking the floor again, um, but um, I think five is okay if you have a 90 minute slot. And the thing is people quite often apply for a 90 minute slot and list five people and then they sometimes get allocated 60 minutes. Then it's, well, if you have five confirmed speakers, it, it feels rude to say, hey, you're not welcome to speak anymore. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's where a part of the challenge is that if you if you list five, four speakers for an hour is is already a lot, but that's doable. Um, but five in an hour is it just leaves too little room for discussion. But it, um, the the problem is is the 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 yeah cramping in the amount of time that you have. So I don't have the the solution here, but I just wanted to flag that issue to um well to take into consideration in how we want to phrase this uh, issue thanks mm -hmm. okay um i'll make a comment and then we have bruna olga and ahaji anybody else okay good so I just want to um, reiterate the point that Alyssa um, made, which is a valid point. So the question I'm I'm going to ask is, do we set maximums depending on the amount of time? Because it makes a difference um, when you do the calculations. It makes a big difference. And I think in the... Um, document, if they decide to go from 90 to 60, they need to know that it, they have to reduce the number of, of, spe of speakers, sorry. So um, discussion is, you can let me know what's your opinion on the number of speakers for 16 and 90 minutes spots. Okay, and let's stick to that, please. Thank you, Bruna, um, what did I say? Thanks. Bruna, Alga, Haji. Okay. No, just about um this discussion. I what I the way I see it is that like we can obviously do the best we can in um issuing recommendations to the community, right? As in panel should have up to five speakers and one moderator or anything like that. But I'm a, what I'm a little bit concerned right now is that we are really taking um community's ability in discussing how the sessions are done or even a um, moderator's ability to de to debate how the sessions are done and in in that way so so maybe perhaps like we can settle with like five people on the floor or whatever um we call the the center of the conversation and then um again let community do what they feel like doing and and instead of like just just doing a top down approach to workshops here that's that's my main concern right now that's all Okay, I, I think we just need to step back one on, for the reason why we're reducing the number of persons. It's because the feedback is that there's not sufficient time to have Q&A. And it's because the panel is too large. So we need to, to listen to the feedback and we've had it year after year. So we we need to make a change. Go ahead, um, um, Olga, and then Al Haji. Sorry. I think the key issue, uh, the key uh, question we should be asking ourselves here, it's not that much uh, 
how many speakers it's like why uh, because the number of speakers it depends uh, the quality of the discussion and the more speakers uh, we have it uh, just turns into each of them having uh, uh, two three minutes intervention maybe like two two three minutes interventions uh, per session and this is it this does not uh, permit uh, for any quality exchange or interaction not only uh, for the speakers uh, themselves but also uh, as Carol just uh, now mentioned, there is uh, no space uh, to uh, exchange with the audience in the room, and I think this is the key. It's not only about uh, uh, bringing uh, speakers uh, uh, to to talk whatever is uh, their point of view, but also uh, to have uh, enough opportunity to talk with those people who are coming uh, to listen, but also uh, to present uh, uh, what it is uh, of the concern to them or what it is that they can bring uh, to the table. So uh, I would say... Uh, if we have a 60 minute slot for a session uh, that would be like uh, three speakers plus moderator maximum and if we have uh, uh, 90 minutes it's uh, four speakers max and uh, and moderator and uh, again i would say yeah, let's uh, ask uh, uh, submitters to pay specific attention that there should be not just uh, uh, again, very theoretically mentioning that there will be space for Q&A, but just because speakers uh, tend to overtake time because they don't feel like they, they had an opportunity to make a point, then there is no Q&A. So that this is something that moderators should be uh, really uh, willing to facilitate properly. Thank you, Ahaji. Um, thank you very much. Um, for me, um, I think it's two things. The, the the participants are really very important whenever we have workshops. And sometimes uh, you're going to see that they'll be um, wanting to participate, but because there is no time. So for 90 minutes, I think four um, speakers plus the moderator, I think is enough. So that at least we have 30 minutes to 45 minutes. That will be left to the participants to discuss on real issues. Then if it is about 60 minute sessions, I think three um, you know, speakers plus one moderator will be more than enough. And I think they will give us enough time to be able to discuss, particularly on very, very important um, issues. Uh, you know, like last year, for example, I participated in uh, one dealing with AI. But we, we speakers, we, we finish everything. So I think also the moderators also must be very alert to ensure that they stick to time. Because for, for us, that was the problem. We all spoke, we all did speak more than 10 minutes, and at the end, there was no time. So I think not only we're reducing the time, but also the moderators also to stick to the time that's actually allocated to each speaker. Thank you. Otis, and Otis will be the last person on this topic. <laughs> Yeah, not, not a lot of comments. I just wanted to agree. I think uh, we had the same discussion last year uh, with the policy network on AI. Um, uh, we ended up sticking to five people for the 90-minute session, um, which I believe worked. Uh, but I do agree the same discussion that the higher the number of speakers, the less the quality of the session. Okay, so... First, first on the floor, 90 minute session, five persons. Yes or no? Yes. Raise your hands for yes. Maximum. Okay, good. Now, 60 minutes, three persons. Sorry, four. <laughs> four? Okay, great. Thank you. And 30 minutes, I hope they only happen one person. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so five. All right. Um, any other things we need to, to speak to? No, in the form, we don't have any anything else. So we could switch to, to the manual. manual. Yes. Okay. Okay, so anything else? Sorry, um, many? To um, step in, uh, I think I uh, got confused here on um, the number of speakers. Are we talking about a limit or just discouraging to go beyond five? Because I think that it's, sorry, uh, because I think that it's very important that we have a number that can allow for a diverse level of um, representation within the session. So just wanted to confirm, are we talking about discouraging or limiting? Um, okay, then thank you.
Okay, so now we move to the manual. Um, for uh, while Celine changes the screen, uh, a brief introduction. We found this, well, I mean, there was this manual, but we didn't use it, uh, the IGF manual that was used in 2022, but not in 2023. So our intention in the working group is to revive or re uh, uh, take this. We have done some updating. Of course, there are issues that uh, uh, were dependent on what we decided in the in this uh, whole meeting, such as the overarching team and so other other stuff, and uh, and also the format sessions, uh, the sessions format. Excuse me. Um, we are going to update all of this. So um, our intention is to send. We we will take a look, a brief look at the at the manual, just for your knowledge, to for your acquaintance. Um, so our intention will be to send both the, or to release both the workshop proposal form and the manual for the proponents so they can read in here some uh, tips, some uh, Q &A, um, uh, frequently asked questions and so on. So um, I will say uh, we have reviewed this, but not with the whole group, working group, uh, so we intend to do that in the following weeks uh, in order to have this ready, if we are able to, I think we, we will, uh, for March 15, when we intend to launch the, the, the call for submissions. Uh, this manual needs to be ready by that time. So in order to, to reduce time in our session here, I will suggest that we... Uh, uh, do this by email. I, I mean, we have to review it in the working group in detail and then uh, uh, share it with the rest of the MAG uh, and, and have a final version within a few days. So before March 15. So if that is workable or do you want to, to, to go uh, through this uh, manual? As I said, it's not... Um, it's an important document, but it's not such uh, uh, the, the the same um, level, if I if I may, of importance or a key document like the workshop proposal form. So the, those are the the topics. I think it will be very hard to go through the whole manual in this session. So I, I I'm not proposing that. So we, we maybe we can go very quick through through it, not stopping anywhere, but just so you have an idea of uh, what uh, type of contents there are in the in this manual. So as I said, uh, you can go on, Celine. We are going to update all of these uh, topics now that we have decided and uh, review everything um, that uh, that is included. But this, in, the intention is to be uh, uh, frequently asked questions type of things, not mandatory issues in, like in the uh, proposal form. We will change that. For of course, we are have decided that we will go to the to the uh, format. Uh, I mean the room uh, uh, layout instead of the this uh, type of sessions. We will change that. And um, let's see. Uh, Okay, the the amount of proposals anyone can submit, forms, the dates, uh, the criteria. Uh, although the the criteria uh, we will be using as a mag to evaluate the the, the proposals, uh, we have done this. We have not reviewed it in case there is a need to update this criteria. Uh, but for now, we're working with this criteria that we used last year, and I think the year before, uh, unless somebody has now something, or I mean, in the course of time uh, before March 15, maybe there will be a need to change that, but uh, we will review it uh, and then update it here. And ah, this is an important thing, uh, the workshop merger. The, yes, this, this was the one, the one, uh, thing. Um, we 
say that in the in the documentation that we the mag can propose to merge some sessions if they are uh, similar or they touch on the same topics or the same approach or whatever but in practice and uh, the secretary can 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 chime in uh, we have not been able to do it I, I don't think ever so um, because of the extreme difficulties that uh, that implies it implies speaking with both proponents uh, and, and changing their 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 time assignments or whatever in their in their format they are proposing and so on so uh, we uh, at least i think this may not be realistic to include the 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 possibility of merging workshops so it's either we accept the, the proposal or we reject the proposal, but um, working through uh, merging workshops, I think is very hard, both from the proponents and from the MAG, uh, for, for the MAG. It will be a, another layer of work after we select the, the proposal, and starting to, to review and to say, okay, we can merge this and this proposal. And I don't think if the proponents will accept it. So, so the bottom line, do we leave this topic in the manual as a possibility or do we take it out? Because in practice, I'm not sure if we are going willing to do it. That's our point. Okay, I'm gonna make a comment and then we're only gonna take um, Bruna and Al Haji. Oh, sorry, Jordan. Um, I'm going to suggest we approach this like we did for the terms of reference, where we will let the group um, make the edits, and then you open those edits to, for people to comment, and you do a cleanup, and then you bring it back to the mag. That is the approach we used for the terms of reference. I think that would work for that as well. Okay, so three persons, Bruna, Alhaji, and Jordan. Bruna? Thank you, Carol. No, it's a question that was in the chat already. Like, what's um, the solution we had for the gender um, discussion on the, on the form? Because um, last year, gender was one of the analysis criteria um, for gender balance and so on. And again, every single year we hear again that um, bringing in non-binary um, and others, um, other groups into the form would be relevant. So just asking this question about it should be in detail. Sorry to interrupt, uh, just to answer to Bruna. We left that uh, with the same criteria as last year. Meaning, uh, we need respect uh, one, at least at least one person in the in the speaker panel or whatever the the the, the persons that will uh, be direct the coordinating or directing the, the session, and at, le at least one person of different gender of the rest. That is the criteria that is written, and we didn't change that in the in the proposal form. We we thought uh, it was okay to leave it uh, as it is now unless the mag thinks differently. But uh, that is our current thinking. So we discussed that, but we didn't find anything else to, 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 to change it. So we did left that. Thank you. Jordan? Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, thanks, uh, Carol. Jordan Carter, uh, mag technical um, community. I'm not um, trying to respond to the, the gender on the form issue. I'm trying to respond on the um, the other issue that we were just talking about. Um, <clears throat> for the um, the issue of merging workshops, I think it's quite an important philosophical one because you can see the MAG as the, the group that's meant to aggregate the ideas of the community. Um, or you can see the MAG as the group that's got the responsibility to organize an awesome IGF. Um, and I think there might be some opportunities for mergers, for 
<clears throat> yeah, a synthesis between two proposals turned up better than either of the other, the two original ones were, um, and leading in turn to a less congested and more um, compelling program. So I don't think we should remove um, the language that's there personally. I think we'd, I'd rather that we did keep that ability. And if it means we need to build a bit more of a working method inside the MAG for how to deal with such clashes and how we're going to resource the conversations with those people and how you get that right mix of pushiness and diplomacy to secure agreement or at least uh, tolerance of a merger, um, that could all come a bit later. But I, I wouldn't want us to say our only job is to be like a computer and to create something out of all the individual suggestions that come through. Uh, thanks, Jordan. Just for a quick answer from the Secretariat point of view, yes, it is very, very difficult to get to workshops to merge. Um, usually both of them feel that they, even if they've got exactly the same title with a full stop in it, they feel that it's totally different. And we've also had instances where instead of a merger, they just split the time. Half goes in the first half and the other half goes in the second half. And, you know, they get half the time and they rush through everything. And then um, if we are going to go with this, then we have to, you, you would have to tell us what happens if one says no to the merger and the other one says yes. Um, well, what happens there? And then sometimes, as we've seen, one has been um, evaluated very highly and the other one not so high. And then they're forced to merge and they look at it and they say, well, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, you would have to go through that and let us know what should happen in all those cases. Thank you, um, al Haji, my member. Yeah, for me, I think the issue on the merger, I think we need to keep, um, because sometimes you have workshops that are really very similar. And in case the secretariat is unable to um, uh, put them together, um, I think we should go with the yes. Because again, this is a global forum where we have you know thousands of people that want to participate and thousands of people also want to create workshops. And again, when you look at the way we, we do the analysis and then uh, look at the workshop proposals, it takes a lot of time. And I think it's important that we try to match um, workshops that are really very similar. The second item actually I has was also about the um, uh, the number of proposals that somebody can submit. I think three is a bit too high. Um, knowing that this is a global forum and that a lot of people, the workshops actually are increasing year by year. I think the three may be maybe too high. Maybe they need to really look at that and then see maybe perhaps make it maximum of two to allow other people also to, to make submissions as well. Thank you. Lito? Oh, hello, yes. Thank you for that. Uh, and that's another issue that we should take a look at. We will. Uh, and, and to Jordan, I would like to, to, to also add to what Chiang Hatai had said, that um, last year we, uh, each one of us had to, to review and evaluate more than 100, 106, 110 proposals. Uh, and then in a, in a certain time, and then, and they they were by groups. So I did evaluate 100, whatever, uh, and everyone did the same. But we didn't look, I didn't look at the other proposals from other group that was evaluating. So I couldn't say I should merge this one with one of them because I don't know the, 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 those uh, proposals. So that, that would be, that would have to be defined like the, the questions uh, Chen Hatai uh, posed uh, beforehand, I think, because that would add not only more work, but complexity, very complex issues in a certain amount of time. But of course, if uh, Mark decides, we can leave this as it is, but we will have to solve those other aspects of uh, concrete and practical work. Thank you. Okay, um, Olga will be the last person on this. Remember, we're going to let the working group um, make some changes, that it's gonna be open up into a 
um, Google Doc where you can comment. Then the working group will clean up and bring the final thing to, well, the clean version to the uh, mag. So go ahead, Olga, and I'll go be the last person on this. Um, mm -hmm. So I wanted to say that uh, those challenges that Shanket I mentioned, uh, they are very valid, but maybe we could uh, try, uh, we could still try the approach with matching the sessions, but uh, um, elaborating in advance uh, some clear guidance what to do uh, to address all those points that Shanket I has mentioned. I also know that uh, other global events are practicing uh, this uh, measure of sessions and uh, I also think that, uh, okay, there is this ego component that people think what they have proposed is important to every single dot in that proposal, but at the same time, if we say that this is about multi-stakeholderism and, uh, and learning how to work together, then I also think that should be somehow uh, understood by people that this is about finding the consensus and common approach uh, to the themes. Plus, uh, uh, imagine proposals is uh, something which could help us to improve the quality of the uh, IGF agenda rather than just having uh, uh, the quantity of many uh, repetitive sessions. Also, I think uh, there is uh, quite an issue that uh, uh, there are many uh, sessions uh, which uh, also propose uh, the same speakers or when, or when the proposals are uh, struggling with finding the speakers, but just because they want to have a session in the agenda, they just uh, uh, try to, to bring uh, whatever connections uh, they have and include those people, sometimes people who do not really have the, uh, the narrow expertise on that issue to be on the panel. So I think if we match uh, sessions, sometimes it could really bring a better quality in both in terms of speakers, but also in terms of maybe polishing the, foc the focus of that session. At least uh, I believe this is something which is uh, worth trying. If we fail, we fail, but uh, but we know that, that we did our best to try this. Thank you very much. Thank you, working group. Um, excellent job. Yes. Um, so we're moving on to the next session, but um, we're going to swap working groups with, um, with NRIs, um, we need Anshin, yes. So given Anshin some time. So we're now moving to um, to working groups to give their, well, only that's, yeah, working groups to give their pre, um, updates. Who's first on the list? Thank you. Yes. Um, So we're going to start with, um, and we're going to give five minutes, five minutes, up, five minute updates. Um, so five minutes discussion, 10, five, 10. Good. All right. So we first up is um, working group on um, strategy. Raise hand to say that you're going to start. Chris? You're going to give Chris the mic? Yep. There we go. Oh, there you go. Hi, um, I'm jumping in here. Bruno is also obviously co chair of this, um, who's on the mag, but I thought I would jump in just mainly because of the CSTD survey, which I've been the um, point person on, and I think is probably the main point uh, for discussion here today. Um, thank you, Celine, for sharing the link in the document there. Um, this is a draft that was finalized on the 24th, so five days ago. I don't think there have been any changes since then. My understanding is that the leadership panel has endorsed this and is willing to sign off on this as the response to the CSTD survey um, on behalf of leadership panel. And I think what we have at the moment is a need to sign off as the MAG and give Carol our blessing to endorse this as the MAG chair um, so that it can come from the IGF community more holistically. Um, the document, as I say, is there, able to be read. It's quite lengthy. <laughs> What we ended up, obviously, we, there was a discussion of this in the working group on strategy, but we also had the dynamic coalitions um, collective make some 
input and those have been integrated there um and, and as well as some comments from the leadership panel which were also integrated with there's probably a bit of duplication as you go through the different questions but i'm happy to leave that there because i think it it means that the response to each of these different questions can also stand alone and we don't really know how this is going to be utilized by the cstd so that's probably quite useful actually um but yeah i so at that point i'm sort of handing this over to the mag and to carol for um whatever process she sees fit to go through to have mag sign off on this um, perhaps it makes sense before I do that. Sorry, Carol, I didn't mean to cut you off there. To say the one other point probably worth updating on in terms of working group strategy is the MAG feedback on the Internet We Want paper. Um, there is a deadline tomorrow. Um, I've reached out to Vint and Carol, and Vint was um, happy to give the MAG an extra week to finalise a reply. There has been some discussion on the working group strategy, and we have a couple of um, bullet points to start off our our response. We haven't yet had a chance to sort of put that into a full text. Um, so I think there is some eagerness in the group to do that. So we'll we'll work on that as quickly as we can, um, and hopefully we'll be able to get that finalised quickly as well. Um, I'll stop there, and I guess hand to. Carol. Yeah, okay, so since we we have uh, an extension, um, I think the first time we worked out how we would approach it, we had a short deadline. So since we have a, a longer um, time to put before submission, I would suggest we go the same route where it's we're at the point where it's a clean document. Um, we could allow it for commenting um to the mag okay and then i probably want to set a timeline how much time do you think after commenting would you need so if you could work yourself way backward from may 31 chris or uh, bruna not understanding okay good so since we now have more time, we can allow the mag to look at it. Still can't hear me? You can hear me? Okay. Oh, okay. I'm unmuted now. Um, I, I was going to say, so yes, we do have an extension to March 31. Mm -hmm. um, I am certainly open to having some comments from the mag, but I also would like to sort of this has been available to the to mag and shared with you and working uh, with the working group strategy and others for a while now so i'm I'm hopeful that the that those who had um points they wanted to make or include here have done that um but as you say we do have a little extra time um so but i, I would really i think it would be important to get this finalized and submitted really as soon as possible and and not use the the new 31 march deadline um, as a reason to push it too far down the down the line. I, okay, I'm so that you're saying seven days. Um, that's fine by me, but yeah, so we can we can certainly do that. Okay, so um, until next week, Friday, you'd say. Okay. I think that's Good. fine. I I mean, I think the question then is whether we need to go back to the leadership panel. Um, if we have further changes and have them be happy with those changes that will be also on their behalf. I think only if it's a major add or major edit. Um, otherwise, I, I can't see the leadership panel making any big inroads. Okay. Okay. All right. Then we'll let, we'll give the mag a, a week until set until next Friday for any final comments. Okay. Thank you. Um, any any other updates or just this? Well, you only had five um, minutes. I'll, so. Bruna, <laughs> Bruna is the other, other co-chair, may have other comments. That's that's it okay. for me. Bruna or any of the um, co-chairs? Thanks, Cara. I don't have anything to add, but thanks a lot. Moving to... Um, 
to Zhao. You ready? Okay. For the multilingual, and I think uh, it's really it's uh, Mac, uh, very supportive of this idea, and it's, it's really work very important because a lot of community do not speak English, and that will help us to promote our work and the importance of IGF. Uh, generally, I think we don't need regular meeting or conference, so that will will we, we'll, we just need to translate the the record of each of our Mac or important uh, meeting. So generally, it won't take a lot of time. And we can email that to Celine, and she will help us to post that with a note that it is by volunteer. So it's really easy, and it's, it's really helpful. So I call on more, more Mac members to join us. Uh, I think it's really, really uh, helpful. Thank you. Um, did you did you reach out to the NRIs because um, within their coordinated group, persons were talking about um, doing translations? I remember I'd asked you to talk to speak to Ancha. Pardon? So I'm quite new here. I'm not sure of the procedure. So there, are, I know some of the volunteers. And we can translate some, like for 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 me Mandarin, and maybe we can do that. Maybe Selin can help us help help us to do that. Okay, not, so mm -hmm. okay, go ahead, Selin. Thank you. So yes, indeed, we we created already a mailing list, but until now we mostly reached out to, of course, Mag members. It was uh, among others last time during our virtual call. We have not, um, we do not cover yet all six languages, six uh, official UN languages. So um, that would be a good idea to indeed reach out to the NRIs. And um, we also have already some volunteers, if I'm not mistaken, uh, who translate um, the yearly IGF uh, summary report uh, and key messages into other languages. So perhaps we can also reach out to to them. And um, also thank uh, thanks to, to Zhao who translated already past virtual MAG meeting notes, and perhaps this face-to-face uh, -face meeting and their meeting notes could be a nice exercise to indeed uh, kick off, let's say, the, the working group. Thank you. Okay, floor open for a few minutes. Any comments, inputs? This is the multilingual working group. Okay, um, working group on youth engagement, Sarah. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, actually, there is no much of an update um, as a new MAG working group being recently approved, but uh, we will have our, fir our first meeting in the coming weeks. Um, and when sending out the meeting notes, uh, we will make sure to also encourage um, interested members and as well as young young people to join this group. Uh, but one thing to, uh, to I would like to present here, maybe for the mug um, to, for consideration is that um, there has been quite an interesting discussion uh, in the youth track, um, reflecting on the enriching experience, um, especially mentioning at the 2019 Youth Summit in Berlin. Um, it's, it's clear that the discussions uh, were both nourishing and also um, an, an insightful um, t talking on the, on the topics across multiple um, discussion points, and furthermore, the feedbacks over the years and also um, previous open consultations um, really underscores the 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 need for more time to delve into this um, important youth summit. So, um, given also the the fact that um, the packed schedule of the day zero activities. Uh, for example, we can um, list the NRI activity and also other um, sessions that the youth coordinators really take part in. 
because you know most of the participants in the in the use track are also a use coordinator for their own own use initiatives. So um, they adhere to this forward thinking solution, which is um, introducing a dedicated day one session exclusively for the use summit. Uh, maybe this in this approach would would really provide um, the time for in-depth discussions uh, without having um, like overlapping events with a um, like the one one hour hour and a half of sessions. So it's just an idea to reimagine to to, to rethink um, about this summit. Um, and also ensure that it remains um, a vital platform for dialogues and for um, uh, collaboration as well. Thank you. Open for comments. Um, I would I'd like to suggest the same with the multilingual to reach out to the NRIs. Um, they may have young people within their community interested. So you could have a chat with Celine or Ancha. Okay. A 10 minute coffee break. And hopefully we'll have um, answer availability, if not in person, then online. 10 minute coffee break. So back at, well, yeah, 22? 22, 4. Uh, I didn't see your hand, Bruna. We'll we'll take it after the coffee break. Sorry about that.
Okay, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. And we're going to change the schedule a bit. So we're going to start with the policy networks followed by the um, BPFs, then NRIs and DCs. Oh. Okay, so we will start with the policy network on internet fragmentation. You go in with Saiba. Great, um, thank you so much. Um, Roz here, um, just, doing a quick update on the policy network for internet uh, fragmentation. Um, obviously, I worked um, through this group as a uh, co-author. Um, so, um, of course, I'm sure the chairs will have an update, but I just really wanted to take this opportunity to emphasize what an excellent experience it was participating in this policy network and really to highlight 2024 is a crucial year to take the recommendations of this policy network forward. Um, intersessional work at the IGF is such a core component and 
um, I think it's really critical. This remains a key feature of the agenda in terms of um, these groups coming together with people from all over the world, different backgrounds to come together and coalesce around different ideas and draft things like reports and bring things to fruition. So um, just to uh, elaborate a little bit on my experience here, I served as a co-author um, alongside a few others through the policy network on internet fragmentation. Um, we brought together um, a bunch of dis different stakeholders um, across um, groups to uh, deliver a report. This year would be an excellent opportunity to promote that and further the discussion on internet fragmentation. So again, happy to hand over to the co-chairs. Um, they may well be planning to update in further detail, but just to express uh, really strong support for this work um, to continue and say generally how um, important intersessional work all the way from policy networks to dynamic coalitions is to the IGF. Thank you so much. Go ahead, Bruna. Thank you, Carol. I, I first of all, thanks, Ross, um, for the endorsement. I, I didn't see this coming. So really, thank you so much. And, and it's really valuable to have you speaking on behalf of the PNIF as not just one of the co-authors, but one of the governments that were deeply engaged in the work. We do appreciate all you, yours and Nigel's um, dedication to the theme. Um, not really sure whether I should go more over the topic, but just to, to flag the same things I did last time. Um, I'm the MAG co-facilitator for this PN. Um, um, Chital is the community co-facilitator for this PN. WIM has been such an incredible help in the last two years for this work, and we wouldn't be able to do anything else without him and, and without the community also. But our plan for 2024, if we're given the third and last year, is to work on the implementation of the recommendations. So it's it's what is on the screen, testing, refining, and socializing the 2023 recommendations, identifying means for doing so, and also connecting some of the socialization and implementation of the RECs, um, both with the GDC and SDGs processes and the WISIS Plus 20 review. Um, we do believe the PNIF could sound, could be a soundboard for all of these processes. And, and above all, um, it would be very important to have this work continuing for one last year, since this seems to be the, the core and the inflection point for a lot of the multi-stakeholder related process. So um, that's a little bit it, Carol. Um, continue to work on the three baskets, um, technical governance and user experience fragmentation but focus on a socialization of regs and then coming up with the last kind of beat about this process and, and even some further um, recommendations for the space, but that's all, thanks. Um, I, I suppose I should have started off by saying that um, we've resolved the issue of, of having to um, do approvals because the um, we only have four. So what you're doing is just presenting um, your proposals, okay? And if anybody on the mic feels that maybe there's there's something that, or there's a gap, then they could let you know about the gap and you could decide what you're going to do with that gap. Okay, so thank you, Bruna. Um, anybody has any comments for um, Policy Network on internet fragmentation? The proposal's ahead of time, so... Um, no comments on that, no additions, no anything. Okay. Okay, many, go ahead. 
Carol, uh, my name is Cecilia Dumag member. Just to really second um, what was said on the importance of the intersectional work and the importance of the outputs that we get from the policy networks in general, including the one on internal fragmentation, uh, I believe they're all very much important and they are really a key representation of what the IGF can bring into the policy discussions. And as we put together, especially um, um, the program of the IGF, I think that it's um, very important to make sure that we link uh, very clearly and, and provide opportunity for the policy, the, the work that comes out uh, from the, the intersectional um, uh, thread of work of the IGF, that it's well connected with the main sessions and it's reflected to the program of the IGF because this is a very important way um, to communicate and do a good outreach of, of what the IGF has brought um, on that front. So yes, Satomaya, thank you. Thank you, Manny. Um, I, I would like to, to stress or to remind the PNIs and BPFs that, well, also NRIs and, and DCs, that we're looking for good, strong messages out of um, these intersessional works. So it's going to be vital that you provide us with some messages. Okay. Thank you. Um, next is PN on meaningful access. Al Haji. Thank you very much, Carol. This is Alaji, a MAC member. And uh, just to um, quickly say about the policy network on meaningful access. Uh, essentially, um, um, you know, the access to the internet to make meaningful contribution to improving people's lives locally, for strengthening national economies, and more broadly, to achieving the sustainable development goals. It has to be approached holistically. And that's the reason why this policy network becomes really very important, uh, because we'll be dealing with um, access to the internet. Now, just to remind you, still now, we have over 2.6 billion people that are not still connected. So when we talk about connecting the internet for all, I think this is a particular area that we need to look at. And that's the reason why um, um, it was decided in 2021 uh, to have this um, network created, um, which is still very important um, here. Now, um, about 30 organizations and individuals from the stakeholders group have actively participated to the activity um, of this network. Um, this can be seen through the second report of the PNME uh, produced in, the, in 2023. We can send the link, which is also on the, on the, on the website of the IGF. So governments um, represented like Brazil, NGO like APC, NUPEF, Global Digital Inclusion Partnerships, and many others, industries such as Google, um, represented by Vinsurf, to small companies such as Naval or Savannah Moon, um, et cetera, and international organizations, all, all have actively participated in this particular area. So where we are with the work done, along all along the year 2023, the group Thanks also to the um, uh, in, uh, defectible work of uh, Ms. Daphne, who is an independent consultant for digital policies and governance, has actively contributed to identify a certain number of best practices and policy solutions. Now, what we plan to do in 2023, um, sorry, what we plan to do um, is to continue where we left off in 2023. That is in the final report produced by the group. There are plenty of recommendations of actions to be implemented in the course of year 2024. And uh, the network chairpersons have formally asked to uh, leadership panel to submit the successful examples identified by the network to regional institutions such as the African Union, League of Arab States, and so on uh, for the implementation in their respective areas. So for the future digital compact initiative where some experiences could be submitted to be spread around the world. So for uh, multi, uh, multilateral institutions that could provide their expertise and resources across the world to countries in need. So in conclusion, for all the reasons mentioned above, the outgoing chairman, chairmanship of the PNME, that is Nima uh, Langagira and uh, Giaco Mazon, and the new proposed chairmanship, that is myself, Mark, being a Mark member, and uh, also a former Mark member of Giacomo, um, suggest to Mark to continue this experience for 2024 with a start as soon as possible in order to implement the suggestions approved in the action plan of 2023. Thank you. Any comments?
Okay. Uh... Um, thank you. Thank you, Carol. I, I just want to um, maybe pass through a um, fast since we already discussed um, or talked about it in the last meeting. Um, just to talk about the work plan, um, the policy network on AI um, plans to um, work on six goals this year, uh, with the first goal to focus on strengthening the global co collaboration on AI and related aspects of data governance, um, to identify AI governance frameworks, principles, policies, and good practices being developed in the world, and particularly those uh, in the global south and elevate the principles and values um, of AI governance that are pinned by the UN. Um, the third goal is to bring the IGF's multi-stakeholder and multidisciplinary expert-driven community together um, with widened inclusion of voices of the global south, uh, gather synthesized knowledge uh, on the topic uh, in the community, uh, the fourth goal to build on uh, previous uh, 2023 PNI uh, report discussions and create synergies, as well as provide inputs uh, to the global AI policy and regulatory dialogue. Um, the PNI also will contribute to the UN uh, High Level Ad Advisory Board um, uh, on AI's consultations. Uh, if possible, also gather AI governance consultations. It also promote debates among the community on topics related to AI governance and ethical, social, economic, technical, and environmental sustainability of these systems um, through webinars and other multi-platforms. So um, we have around um, uh, four outputs. The first output is the uh, policy brief, uh, the 2024 policy brief, uh, that will build upon work um, on the 2023 work um, and, and focus on, on four key areas or sub-themes. Uh, the first one is uh, AI governance, interoperability and good principles and good practices, which is um, a topic that we discussed uh, last year as well and we would like to build upon work done last year. Um, the second is environmental sustainability and the AI value chain. Um, the third is the liability, of, liability as a mechanism uh, for ensuring AI accountability. Um, and the last one is led by issues within the AI life cycle. Um, for um, um, other outputs beyond the, the, the policy brief, um, the PNI also work on, on, on webinars around uh, the PNI work mm -hmm. topics uh, to fo foster discussions and encourage inputs. I also um, we work on inputs to AI governance consultations, including um, the high level advisory board on AI. Um, on this topic, uh, we are currently finalizing uh, the input document, um, and we have a last meeting uh, on the 6th with a deadline to have a final document on the 10th uh, for um, the final uh, version of the input document. Um, we'll also present progress of the work at key junctions um, of the IGF 2024 cycle uh, and IGF um, um, 2024 meeting um, in Riyadh. Um, for mechanisms of working, um, uh, we'll gather around five mechanisms, starting with open dialogue. Um, and the second will be to gather information um, and then going to drafting. Um, after the drafting, we'll do consultations to gather feedback from the broader community. Um, and finally, have a final version of the policy brief um, that could be presented at the RIAD um, IGF 2024. Uh, we'll also foster um, uh, stakeholder engagement and uh, do different outreach through the different um, outputs that we, I mentioned, such as um, such as webinars and uh, and uh, presenting the progress at different uh, uh, work at key junctions of the IGF. Um, so in short, that's the the work plan of the PNAI uh, 2024 cycle. Thank you. F on cyber. Okay, thank you, Chair, for giving the floor. Thank you, Salim, for sharing the proposal. And Karina Mirarda, MAG member for the record, is an honor present the cybersecurity BPF proposal on behalf of the coordinated team. 
Josefi Melissa, Dino del Accio, Octaviana Grand Jones, Yon Bombana, Adrian Pion Nona, and myself. This proposal was already presented to the MAG during the last virtual meeting, but we have added a few updated buses on the comment and request we received. This, re this year, the plan focuses on building cybersecurity capacity, identify gaps and fostering a culture of learning and continuous improvement. improvement. We have to map out initiatives, break down silos, and discover linkage and gaps. The goal is to provide the comprehensive overview of capacity building initiative at both a regional and global level in an informative database to do seeking capacity building a processes informed by feedback and lesson learning. We work on four tables. More information and detail on the methodology you can find in the proposal. <clears throat> Sorry. The number one, capacity, cybersecurity capacity building mapping initiative to improve collaboration. Number two, China online safety collaboration with the DC on challenges right in digital world. Number three, cybersecurity capacity building for AI analyzing how cybersecurity is addressed in various initiatives. We aim to collaborate with the PNI on this working table. And number four, cybersecurity skills for students, ensuring students' skills meet industry needs. Our work plan is currently developing methodologies for gathering and presenting initiatives, organizing them, identifying connections, overlaps, and gaps and reporting findings. The work, the work plan envisages various all bridge rounds. Now I'd like to hand over to Wood, Wood to briefly summarize the work on table four. That's all for me, thank you, Chair. And if you are agree, I would like to invite Wolf, please, to meet. About. Yes, uh, thank you, Karina, and thank you, Carol. Um, this is a new addition to this program, but you've seen the proposal I've made. I think that it's important for the MAC to understand that the Dilemma Coalition on Internet Standards, Security, Safety always sees me, but I'm the coordinator of eight different working groups. And one of that working groups sees to education and skills, and that's the most advanced of our working groups. They've identified in a global study that was conducted in 2022 that there's a, about a 20 year knowledge gap between what industry demands of tertiary education in general on cybersecurity and what is delivered by education facilities. And we have come up with a plan to try to close that gap underneath the umbrella of the IGF by bringing industry representative together to identify exactly what this skills gap is and then bring in representatives from the educational sector to see how this gap can be closed. And if we manage to do that, we have a very tangible policy outcome in, in the IGF that can be presented as a blueprint to the rest of the world and perhaps even brought further in the form of capacity building training. So that's the concept behind the plan. Is it going to be run by me? The answer is no. I will be coordinating it from the Dynamic Coalition point of view, but it will be run by Janice Richardson, who is a very well-known person in education, cyber, and law circles, and by the Polish Research Institute and .pl organization, NASC. And they are the leading this, this work. So I think... Uh, explained enough for now and I hope that you think this is a valuable proposition. Thank you. That's all for me. Um, thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. Um, we are open to comment on question and we would like to invite my co-facilitator to communicate. I'm missing something. Thank you. Okay, so the floor is open to comments on this BPF, cybersecurity.
Okay, so um, we're going to give Celine two minutes to get her presentation up. But in the meantime, the last um, topic for the day was on the strategic vision for future IGFs. And we're going to ask the working group on strategy to come up with drafts or a presentation for each one of these. And then we're going to, I think it, it calls for our full participation and focus on this. So we're going to call a MAG meeting or we're going to call a meeting specifically for the strategic vision uh, future. And you would know this is one thing that I'm, I'm really pushing for, for us to produce. Um, so we're going to ask you to start off the draft for us. And then um, we will call a meeting only to work on, on this. Uh, open for comments. Uh, May I ask a clarifying question, Carol? Was that? Oh, no, that's wanted, a sorry. question. Yeah, sorry. So the strategic vision, it, I just, I think I zoned out while you were talking. Sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit dopey over here. Um, did you say that we we're going to ask the um, the strategic, the what WG strategy to prepare a, an IGF strategy that deals with the three bullet points that are in the agenda? And then we're going to have a MAG meeting to work through and shape what the working group has proposed. Is that what I heard you say? Okay, so why why I said that is that we we've already started the, the group had already started this and there was a document out there already and we didn't get much traction off of it. Okay. So we're gonna go back to try to get traction on that document. So I think to to we don't have the time to give it the attention that it really, really needs. And this is something very dear to my heart, and I don't want to see it botched. We really need to buckle down and get this done. So I'm saying that um, we only have about 45 minutes left in the in the meeting, mm -hmm. and so I'm asking that. Well, would it be possible to start by someone presenting what's already like at a, a five minute version of what's already in the document, so those of us who are not familiar with it? could get okay. a bit of like a um, like a I warmer Bruno, up. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I see Bruno has a hand up. So um we have a few of the chairs in the um online. So yes, we can give time to that. And we can start off with Bruno. Our hands been up. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. Um, I didn't necessarily put my hand to talk about that, but I can definitely help. On that note, I feel like a lot of the conversations in previous um working group strategy meetings um, were about um, the relevance of the IGF and us coming up with a more strategic vision, bullet points, talking points for us um, as a forum, right? And then um, some other discussions on having clearer, even clearer um, correlations to the SDGs and, and discussions like that. So that was a little bit on the back lines of what we, we, what we have tried to to come up with, but it's still an strategy. It's still a part of this. The part of the strategy still needs to be um, better defined, and it's still something we can definitely work on for the coming days. I'm not sure if Chris would like to add anything, but um, if so, I might be forgetting some points here. But it was a little bit of that correlation with SDGs, thinking about a strategic vision for the IGF um, post the mandate renewal. And also coming up with more cl even clearer lines on what do we do and why this space is relevant, and so. Chris, you have the floor. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, obviously, this is a very important area. I think we've been relatively reactive in terms of events that we need to be engaged in um, and and responding to. And the CSTD questionnaire is an example of that. Internet We Want is an example of that. Um, we are also going to need to be able to respond uh, in a timely manner. And th th we've started these discussions 
to uh, the global digital compact process and particularly to um, making more concrete the proposals that we put in for the IGF to be um, utilized as a follow-up mechanism. And so that's, that's something that there's a lot of priority on. Now, I think all of this fits into a broader strategic vision and that's absolutely um, appropriate. I think, as you say, it warrants a full board discussion, oh, sorry, full mag discussion <laughs> on that. Um, and I think that we, we can sort of work towards that. Um, and so I, I, that, that's definitely something we can have on the agenda and make sure we're, we're building um, in that direction. Thanks. Thank you. Maybe that will be my last comment today. So first, I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for your well moderation of the open consultation and the MAG meetings and allowing us as observers. And I would like to thank our, also our co-chair and our COD host for being patient with us. Um, just a short comment on the strategic vision. Would it be open to observers also to let's let's say follow up the process or has a kind of a contribution to that or it will be totally close to the MAC members? Just that question. Oh, sorry, Chris Bruna, any co-chair you want to respond? Uh, yeah, this is Chris. I, I can respond very quickly. Uh, the working group strategy is open to all, not just MAG members. Um, so I think anyone with an interest, and it should certainly be many more than just MAG members, um, are welcome and invited and encouraged to take part in this discussion um, and to help us work towards um, a, a more concrete strategy, which will be going beyond the the length of this this year's mag as well i think we're going to this is this is something that will be creating a living kind of document and approach so thanks chris i looking forward to having you contribute jordan uh, thanks, Carol. Hi, everyone. Um, I, I find the idea of defining a strategy in these areas quite exciting and a really good practice for a number of reasons. Um, one is that it makes us think hard about what we want the future direction to be. Then it gives some kind of a written output that other people can hold us to account for delivering, which I think is always a, a good, if slightly scary thing to do. Um, and three, it gives us good timing to go into the discussions with the WSIS review about really articulating a positive evolution of the IGF framework. Um, so I just want to say um, thank you for this being a priority on your part as the MAG chair. Thank you to the WG strategy members who've done some work on this. Um, if there's the possibility of um, Bruna and Chris or whoever else is appropriate from the, um, the WG strategy, I don't know, maybe sending a note with a few links to those previous docs and outputs just so there can be like an orientation into it. And if there is any, I think I remember seeing a slide pack or something around the strategy, but I, I've lost it all. So maybe that if there could be that kind of refresh either from the co-chairs or from the secretariat that could like get us all on a similar page. I think that would be super helpful for me anyway. Um, so thanks. Chris, there was a subgroup within strategy that was working on it. So do persons um, sign on to the working group for strategy and then um, sign up for the subgroup? I, I'm not sure there's a subgroup specifically working on this at this time, but certainly I think those subgroups in the working group strategy are relatively informal anyway, so they don't necessarily have their own mailing lists. Um, so yes, encourage people just to join the working group strategy list to join the meetings where possible. We're rotating the time zones, time slots of those to allow for more people to join um, and yeah, be an active part of the conversation. Okay, um, yeah, and Henriette, thank you for putting the 
um, link for the mailing list in the chat. Uh, yeah, there were a few documents. I think there was a, a previous strategy written and then some other documents that could be provided. Okay. All right, uh, Celine, you ready? Okay, so moving on to Celine and NRIs and DCs. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I'll I'll do this presentation on behalf of Anya, who who is leading most of the um, these uh, various um, IGF work and and tracks. I'll start with a youth track um, for you for you to know. There have been uh, forty seven responses received so far um, regarding the theme and uh, issue selection, and you can see that the um, uh, most popular one were uh, artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. Um, as you know, um, the IGF uh, recognizes youth until uh, 35 years old. It is a growing community. So um, following this call for thematic input among um, the youth, it was decided to have uh, empowering young leaders for trusted AI as an overall theme for um, this year's youth track. Um, here you can see, as uh, every year, we're having the Eurodig, uh, the Asia-Pacific IGF, the African IGF, and last but not least, uh, the youth Lek IGF. Um, all these various activities lead then to the final output, which are the IGF 2024 messages from, from youth. Um, we do not have the same uh, the, all the dates yet, um, but we'll keep on updating, of course, the IGF website um, uh, with incoming information. So again, um, empowering young leaders for, for trusted AI, the youth IGF coordinators, uh, together with, of course, um, Anya from the Secretariat, coordinate the community's input. Um, what is um, expected from them is, of course, a dialogue between youth, but also with um, senior stakeholders. And something that we started doing also as of last year is to um, bring young people together with parliamentarians. So we, we try, Anya and I, to merge both youth and uh, parliamentary track sessions, at least for, for one common um, activity, which has been uh, pretty successful at the, the various IGFs that we've had, regional and uh, the annual one. Um, so here again, I mentioned that we do not have yet the, the dates and locations for all the, the various youth um, IGF activities, but of course there is going to be something happening at Eurodig for that uh, a date is set. Uh, it's going to be on the 19th of June in Vilnius. Um, the youth like IGF will take place in Santiago, however, we do not know yet um, when it will take place. Same for the uh, Asia Pacific IGF, it's going to take place in Taipei. Um, when uh, the youth activities uh, will take place is still to be um, confirmed. And as for the African IGF, so we do not know yet the, the time.